the NFL playoffs to getting in and then have to go on the road and and, and make it to a Super Bowl. Uh, so that the, the the first thing is make the tournament, but then yeah, then you want to be like the Patriots and get home field advantage throughout. It just makes it a little easier. That's right. Yeah. So that, that that's a that's a theme on the show today as we uh, we get set for a couple of home games against Texas Tech. It's spring football on Saturday. All the reports coming from spring football are good. The best thing I heard is that the offensive line looked good because nobody said that a year ago in, in the spring game. And I don't look any of the statistics that come out of it and that kind of stuff. I, I just sort of look right past it. Uh, I just am very happy to hear that they feel uh, settled on the offensive line and that we don't hear some of the things that we heard a year ago, which was, I don't know. They, there's, uh, the tackles may have to improve quite a bit between now and September. I don't know if I'm hearing that right now. Well, you 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 nailed it, Phil. Uh, a spring game is all about the eye test. You know, there's different ways to evaluate talent, and and no, you're you're exactly right. Numbers. I do not care about numbers. You want to get your eyes on it. You want to see how fluid uh, the team is. You want to see if there's any speed, if there's any playmakers, and a hundred percent. Uh, that offensive line. I mean, that's going to be top of mind. As bad as it was last year, I think that's going to be the – that's what everybody wants to see. Some folks on Twitter were comparing the statistics between Taylor Green and K.J. Jefferson in the UCF spring game. Now, I saw – I saw it wouldn't be a highlight. It was an interception that K.J. threw uh, in the left side of the end zone, which did look like a poorly thrown pass. But can we please not be comparing statistics from one spring game to another? Let's let's stay away from that kind of comparison. That's like uh, yeah, that's like saying, man, Arkansas. Remember, we beat Purdue. That's right. We beat Purdue in basketball this year, guys. It's like it's it's an exhibition game, fellas. Just it chill out. Didn't count. Yeah, that's exactly right. So, and then uh, the Masters watched a uh, watched a little bit of it oh, on and- Friday, a little bit of it on Saturday, and it sounded like yesterday was uh, just pull away day for Scotty Scheffler. So Rory, Rory won a major uh, a few years back. He went by like eight or nine strokes. It was, it was in South Carolina. It was in the Carolinas and and it was just like, nobody else could kind of keep up. That's what it looked like. There was only one guy in the world and he's, he's truly is the number one. It's a joy to watch when the guy separates himself to win the masters by four strokes from the next best. I mean, that is, that's like winning a football game by four touchdowns, Phil. Like it's, that's just a blowout. Uh, to 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 win that tournament by that many, and then and then there was even another gap between between the next group. But driving the ball better than everybody, getting up and down, chipping better than everybody, and then making putts. I mean, he truly is uh, the number one golfer in the world, and it's not even it's not even close who who the second golfer is. It, he, it was fun. Yeah, you're ho- you're certainly hoping to get a uh, to get some drama when it comes to a Sunday at the Masters. Well, the, none of that at all. The drama was really just about um, was about Vern and his last ever call at the Masters, wasn't it? That seemed to be what the drama was about. Yeah, I mean, and and, and Tiger making the cut uh, that 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 had to be pretty cool from that amateur, the the kid from Ohio State. Uh, he was the low am, made the cut, getting to play with Tiger. Had his had his buddy, had one of his high school buddies on the bag. Um, that's um, that's 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 a pretty neat experience. Uh, the Swede, they they had a, a, a Aberg that uh, he's it was his first ever Masters Masters Phil, and he he got uh, finished in a solo second. So that was, I mean, for your first ever trip there, that that's getting it done. It's pretty good, uh, pretty good start for uh, for a, a career as far as the the uh, majors are concerned. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, and then what else? No basketball commits yet. We got any anything oh, to be well, nervous about as far as that? No, I, I don't think so. Well, Arkansas doesn't, but Tremont Mark going to Texas, mm-hmm. you, you knew he was going to – I mean, I, he was our best player, not even close. You knew he was kind of going to get get to pick where he wanted to go. Uh, great get for Texas. I was selfishly, Phil, selfishly, I wanted Tremont Mark to come back and be a hog because uh, I, I did think he was our best player on the team. I thought Coach Cal could have used him. But, hey, everybody, that's the, it's just the way the, 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 the portal goes. It's the way college basketball goes now. Hey, I, I also kind of – I guess I expected that there would be at least one commit over the weekend for Cal, but then, you know, I'm reminded something he said himself at his introductory press conference that it's going to take a little bit longer to put a team together just because of how the portal works and you get kids that are making visits from this place to a next place, and that's what's happening right now, which also includes some of the uh, the, the high school decommits for Kentucky. Jaden Quaintance is apparently looking at Louisville. A um, couple others might be visiting other schools, but Arkansas is still a priority for these for these kids. I just think they're trying to 
you know, they're going through the process again. They've already decided who it was they were going to play for. It was going to be Cal at Kentucky. So now there's other coaches at other places, which also includes Cal at Arkansas. And Man, I would just be surprised if at some point this week you don't start to see not a roster coming together, but a few pieces of it coming together too. And and I think of of guys when I when I when I when I watch soccer and in the Premier League, you'll hear like, oh, Watford, they got this guy from Barcelona's camp. And and then you'll hear about a guy from Leeds United. Well, he he played at Real Madrid for a little bit, and so he comes over. So I think a lot of that goes into Kentucky. When you're looking at these colleges, you're like, well, he was a Kentucky guy. We gotta go get him. There's a little extra weight carrying in the portal saying his name was by Kentucky same thing over there it's like oh he plays for one of the big six clubs he's got to have talent let's go get him if we can get him for for the certain price that seems to be what's going on in, in the portal because don't you think if you have Kentucky by your name like you're kind of they're definitely eyes are going to open up you're going to take it you're going to take a harder look at him knowing that you you have Kentucky pedigree well yeah I mean that's the way that I viewed when Drew Sanders came over to play football exactly. from Alabama that's how I view Jaheim Singletary um, from Hazelwood Georgia. from Oklahoma. That's yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, If you're recruited by those schools and you make the team, you might not play very much like Singletary didn't. And uh, Sanders was playing out of position in his mind. Uh, but that is a certain kind of athlete, a certain kind of pedigree that plays for those programs. And, yeah, you view, I, I view Kentucky the same way. Under Cal, at least, maybe things are a little bit different, you know, with, uh, with Mark Pope as the head coach and – I would imagine he probably puts a team together uh, quite a bit differently than John Calipari does. I just wonder if Cal puts a team together any differently at Arkansas than he did at Kentucky. And and right now it's there still is no team to borrow his joke, but we did, we still I guess also there's been no confirmation as far as the coaching staff is concerned. But uh, the reports were that the whole staff is following him from. Kentucky to Arkansas, but we just ha haven't had a press conference about that. Again, I think the the staff happens first, and then and then the recruits start coming in, whether at a high school or via the transfer portal. And man, you got a lot of them to choose from outside. Of, well, choose from might not be the right term to try to get to come here from his original recruiting class and kids that played from last year. If it's about relationships, he's already got relationships with these guys. So, um, you know, last week was the week where. It happened that Cal takes the job and, you know, the rumors turn into reality, turn into this uh, great press conference, an event that went around. And, and now this week, I think, is actually about really putting the team together. By the end of the week, I, I would be surprised if you don't have at least, I don't know, I shouldn't put an artificial number on what it is, but multiple players that do make a decision because at some point, you know, you got to make you got to make a decision at some point, and sooner is better than later for me. I thought that with the pomp and circumstance of the of the Kentucky Rose Bowl parade, just like the Arkansas Rose Bowl parade, it, it, it wins you zero games. I get it. I get you a fan base and going on, but nobody nobody that wins the press conferences or, or wins the parade, you want to see the game on the field. So yeah, cool, good work, but let's uh. Don't don't worry don't don't worry too much about the about the press conference. There's a lot of back and forth of about this press conference and that event. And I, all I, of that it's and like it's, it's like doing stats on a spring game. You know, it's like what's going on. Well, it's also it's fans rooting for themselves as fans. Look at us. Look at how great we are as fans. Pride That's comes before the fall. You know, like they might might want to stay a little bit humble before we get out there. We're they're celebrating a program. They're celebrating a tradition. But then after all of that, and even while it's happening, it's really a celebration of themselves. <laughs> Because that's how I think you view yourself through the lens of your favorite team, and that's that's, that's what Kentucky, it seemed like. Yeah. That's how Kentucky fans certainly view themselves. I don't think there's any doubt about that. Halftime today on a Monday, we have a full slate of guests, which includes Connor O'Gara from Saturday Down South, hour number three. Nate Olson will jump in at twelve fifteen from Scorebook Live. Got a lot of updates as far as uh, potential future Razorbacks or players in state that uh, maybe some teams already have their eyes on. I mean, I'm talking about Arkansas has their eyes on them. And uh, in just a moment, we've got Mike Irwin from Pig Trail Nation joining us on Halftime. So stay with us. We're just back in a moment. See, what every long shot come from behind underdog will tell you is this. The other guy may in fact be the favorite. The odds may be stacked against you. Fair enough. But what the odds don't know is this isn't a math test. This is a completely different kind of test. One where passion has a funny way of trumping logic. 
Listen to every Razorback football game this season right here on ESPN 95.3 and hitthatline.com. Drive a compact SUV that has more style, power, and technology with the 2023 Buick Envision at Harry Robinson Buick GMC right now. Get 1.9% financing for 60 months on remaining 2023 Buick Envisions or choose up to $3,500 in factory discounts. The Buick Envision, it's all about you and designed to inspire. Experience the new Buick at Harry Robinson Buick GMC. Exit 11 off of I-540 in Fort Smith. Hey, I'm Hagen Smith. As an Arkansas pitcher, I know the importance of precision, skill, and keeping cool under pressure. That's why for your home, choosing the right team for heating and air is just as important. You want professionals who bring their best game. When it comes to staying comfortable, I rely on Pascal Air, Plumbing, and Electric. They'll send pros to take care of your home, too. Sign up now for Pascal's Plan Protection Membership before the summer heat for only $8.99 a month. Never pay for a tune-up again when they're included in your membership. Professional people, professional service. Pascal Air, Plumbing, and Electric. Are you tired of the overcrowded fitness centers? Would you like a fitness option where you can actually work out? Then let's hang out. The Hangout is Fort Smith's newest fitness facility. It has an 8,000 square foot gym, indoor tennis, pickleball, and basketball with more sports coming soon. The Hangout offers group and individual training in the gym and boasts three active tennis pros to help you grow your game. Stop in today at 5400 Gary Street or thehangoutfs.com for more information. Be a part of something different. Fitness, sports, and more. Let's hang out. Do you need an attorney that you can actually speak with you need hickey and hole law partners the attorneys at hickey and hole understand the importance of client communication and are taking the time to meet you respond to emails and return calls every case is important and they strive to give each one the time and attention it deserves call today 479-434-2414 or visit them online at kevinhickeylaw.com hickey and hole law partners things are about to get better Nothing says summer fun like fishing with a Thill Bobber with the family. America's favorite floats by Thill are available in a variety of sizes and colors. These premium balsa wood floats are made by the thousands at Pradco in Fort Smith, Arkansas. They are great at detecting the slightest bites by fish and work great in tandem with crickets and red worms. Available at Walmart, Bass Pro Shops, Academy, Lurnet.com, and tackle shops everywhere. America's favorite floats by Thill. Barrels and Brews Bottle Shop at the Hub and Chaffee Crossing has everything you need for your favorite activities. Our knowledgeable staff will be glad to help you with the current specials and our new arrivals of must-have bourbons and whiskeys. Hit the cooler for some of the coldest beer in town or choose from our large selection of amazing wines. Order online or call ahead Monday through Saturday from 10 a.m. till 10 p.m. at the Hub and Chaffee Crossing. Barrels and Brews voted best of the best in Fort Smith. It will put a smile on your face. When it's time for breakfast, Calico County is making it all from scratch. You got the dedicated early morning crew at Calico are cooking up and serving buttermilk pancakes, moist biscuits, rich waffles, country fried potatoes, three types of gravy, and of course their famous cinnamon rolls and much more. They serve all of this and a lot more seven days a week until 11 a.m. Stop in, call ahead, or get it to go. Or just come by and pick up a dozen cinnamon rolls for the office. For breakfast, lunch, dinner, or catering, roll on into Calico County. They're home cooking good. Calico County, just off Rogers Avenue behind Randall Ford. Your home for Every Razorback football, basketball, and baseball game. ESPN Find halftime on 99.5 in Northwest Arkansas, 95.3 in Fort Smith in the River Valley, 
96.3 in Hot Springs in Central Arkansas, 104.3 in Harrison and Mountain Homes, and everywhere on HitThatLine.com. Join the conversation. Call or text ESPN Arkansas on the McClarty Daniel Hotline, 877-377-6963. Now back to the hosts. Here's Phil Elson and Matt Jones. We are efforting getting Mike Irwin right now, so we'll continue to work on that <clears throat> here on Halftime and uh, try to get with him, as we usually will, on a Monday. Uh, there is a Major League Baseball game being played right now, Matt, and it's not a celebration of Tax Day, Patriots Day in Boston. They do this every year. Uh, usually, It's the same day the Boston Marathon gets run. Uh, Red Sox and Guardians playing already into the fifth inning. They had Gronk throw out the first pitch. Number eight, seven. Now, you know Gronk probably doesn't do anything in a normal way. I've seen what the first pitch looks like. You want to make a guess as to what he did with his first pitch? Football player, remember, of course. Oh, I don't know. Did he run a button hook? Did he do a three-step drop? Uh, did he, I mean, I, did he throw it into the ground first? He spiked it. Yeah, there you go. There mm -hmm. you go. He spiked it on purpose. He didn't, wasn't like he was trying to throw a pitch and he bounced it in front of the catcher. He just. Like like, like the Florida State, touchdown. like the old Florida State guy used to throw the arrow into the in, into right. the ground. He's he's yeah. He just minus the horse. Not going to let a horse on a pitcher's mound. Probably destroy the thing. Although putting Gronk unless up you're there Kenny himself. Powers, yeah. Well, that's true. Yeah. That's very true. Yeah, I guess Gronk can't really just throw a regular ceremonial first pitch. Just like what did I see? Travis Kelsey got his. Was it an honorary degree or did he actually finish his degree from the University of Cincinnati? And he's he's on he's on the he's on the stage. He gets his diploma. This happened this weekend. And what did he do to celebrate in front of everybody? He slammed a beer. Smashed a beer. Yeah. Right in front of everybody. Like I don't know any other student that would have a chance to do that. But then again, I also kind of wonder. Um, I guess he can do whatever he wants, wherever he wants, whenever it is, whenever. Are, are tight ends the new drummers? Is the, is that just they? All right, tell me what. Tell where's the correlation with tight ends and drummers? They have the most fun. They 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 spit on everybody. They they do whatever they want whenever they want. They they live by their own set of rules. Um, they they I mean the the drummers. If if you think about drummers and they're those are the guys that's like oh they have their own drum kit so they got one kit and then a, an axe man a guitar player he has thirty seven guitars you know he come, but they just got one so they they cherish it and they act a little. They act a little different sometimes. A lot of it, it was the it's the drummers are the ones that end up uh, dead early, right? They're the party guys. They're the Gronkowskis. They're the Kelseys. You know, they're the guys that they're the life of the party. You know, that's that's that seems like the drummers are uh, they got it going on. They're the ones who spontaneously combust in the middle of a show. How do you dust for vomit? You know, that's there's no way to know. You can't do that. That's I could see I could see Gronk spontaneously combusting on a sideline. But then, fact, he just, then he just all... comes into another one. Then there's two Gronks, you know? He's like, yeah, then there's another one that just kind of, because he's got a twin. <laughs> he's got a twin that's just sitting on his shoulder there at every moment. Kelsey is just all about combusting right now. Like, I mean, he's, 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 he's in a spot where I think he could, he could just come out, of a, come out of the ocean on the beach, drop trow, and everybody would cheer for him. It's just, that's kind of, I think that he's in a sweet spot. Because you can't, like, are you, what are we? Is this Porky's? We're up on it. We're up getting a diploma, for a college diploma, and slugging a beer right in front of everybody. At age 31, too. I mean, it's, I'm not going to be here and tell them to grow up or anything, because I could use that advice myself. It's just, I don't know. I don't know. To me, it felt like it might have been a step too far. He's like Ben Stiller in, um, in Zoolander. It's Merman, Phil. It's Merman. <laughs> I'm told Paul in Fort Smith tells me that that's just for his podcast. It wasn't an official graduation. I mean, they looked like there was a crowd around and everything. Like, well, when you are, when you, are, it is the number one podcast in the country. So I'm sure they've got the kind of money where they could, um, you know, pay extras to just come, come around and make for a fake graduation to allow Kelsey to slug a beer. And because that's the punchline when it comes right down to it. And that's the same idea as Gronk, just literally spiking a first pitch, although. With with that, I mean, there's no pomp and circumstance to throwing a ceremony or first pitch. You just don't want to look like you've never thrown a baseball before. You don't want to look like uh, like a uh, fifty cent. 
That was the one I was thinking about. I was thinking Carl Lewis, but Lewis didn't. I don't remember. He sang in the, the first national. Pitch. He sang the anthem in a really. Yeah, whatever that was. It was not the anthem. It's like, did you practice ever? Like, you know, I know you're a finely tuned athlete, and, and these athletes, you don't make it to that level without practicing. I mean, you got to put work in. That's just that's just how it is. Did you did you even sing the national anthem one time? Did you even do it once before before you went out there? Hey, I mean, I make fun of people whenever they whenever they pull the words out in front of them. But, but I also understand you got to be really nervous when you're singing that. Uh, you got, you're like telling yourself, "Don't get the words wrong. Don't get the words wrong." You know all the words, but somebody eventually forgets them just because the nerves keep pounding them. Not everybody that sings a national anthem in front of a bunch of people at a baseball park or a football stadium or a basketball arena or whatever is used to performing in front of a crowd like that. Yeah, your brain can go blank sometimes. Gronk's brain, I'm not going to say it's blank because the guy is is taking celebrity and turning it into a career. He, he's Fox College footballer. So he was all over, uh, all over pregame shows this year. Colorado, I mean, he was in Colorado there three times in a row. They went to when Deion Sanders had him going. I mean, you saw Gronk on, on the stage half the time. Hey, he, he's got you got to be pretty intelligent to know. So, you know what? I got a, I probably got two or three extra years in me if I wanted to go play football. But why would I do that now? I've made my money. I've got Hall my of championships. Famer. I'm in the Hall of Fame. I'm just going to go. I'm just going to go be uh, be Gronk. I'm going to go be a Jersey Shore guy for for the rest of my life and make a not just make a living out of it, but make a really good living at it and have fun while you're doing it, too. Like if I went, I've never thrown a ceremonial first pitch in my life. I'd love to try it, but I'd be so nervous uh that i would bounce it speaking of first pitches jalen mill jalen milrow throw out throughout the first pitch of friday's game at alabama i've never seen an arkansas football player uh come and throw a first pitch at a razorback baseball game if it's happened i just wasn't paying attention and usually you're supposed to you know they want you it's up to whomever's thrown out the first pitch whether or not you take the mound or if you just throw it from in front of the mound Milrow went to the mound. He went up onto the rubber. Because he's an athlete. Because he is an athlete. That's right. I, I don't know if he's ever played baseball before because it didn't look like he'd ever pitched. But he didn't bounce the pitch. He got it there. Um, it almost looked to me like he's like he was almost like throwing a football. You know, you get you, you throw it just differently. He didn't necessarily get behind the baseball. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it was just that was a very Alabama thing because, of course, they had a day on Saturday. Does Gronk smell like Axe body spray or patchouli? That's that's the question. You know, when you, Come on, you it's definitely Axe. It's like, oh, I see. You smell him before he gets there. He's like, hey, there's Gronk. It's definitely Axe. It's like a sour apple Axe. <laughs> do they even make that? I don't even know if they do. Never used any of that stuff before either. All that all that's going to do is just is just make it smell like body odor sour apple. 877-377-6963. For calls and texts, uh, got a text out of the 479 and then a softball player threw out a first pitch uh, at an Arkansas game. That was Robin Heron. She threw out the first pitch because she threw a perfect game. She didn't just, you know, get to throw out the first pitch because she's a softball player. She threw a perfect game and got Did she softball style first it? Pitch. Or did uh, she... I don't think she did, no. Well, that would have been cool. That would have been, yeah. You know, so throwing a softball like a pitcher, like a, like a softball pitch, you try to throw a baseball like that, that baseball is just going up in the it's air. It's going that way. Yeah. It's just going right up. Good luck. That's it's not so easy. Yeah, I remember when she did that. She looked really good. Um, here's the other thing, too, and I've seen a lot of people um, like question, is Cal going to throw out a first pitch at softball? Is Cal going to throw out a first pitch at baseball and everything? I think he's probably in demand to be at all kinds of birthday parties and Razorback clubs and all of that kind of stuff. And I know he'll do that stuff. Like, he's the kind of guy that I think he went he went to all corners. Well, Kentucky doesn't really have corners. But he went to every edge of Kentucky, um, you know, getting to know the fan base and getting to know the state. And I imagine he'll do the same thing at Arkansas. You kind of have to do that um, a little bit. But I don't know if right now throwing out first pitches would necessarily be on the radar putting a staff together let's get some scott let's get some guys get that can fill the basketball together. team yeah let's do that first like i remember i remember um must threw out a first pitch when he was introduced as the head coach but that was also before the, i think that was before that was the year before the transfer portal really took hold and 
and that was like the introduction. We've already had the introduction with with Cal now. So ceremonial first pitch, man. I mean, I don't remember Pittman coming out to throw a first pitch after uh, after the nine win season, which he might have. But I just I don't know. My brain just doesn't really work one hundred percent these days, so I forget a lot of these things. A call from Brent and Cersei before we break. Hey, Brent, thanks for calling our McClarty Daniel hotline. What's going on? Hey, Phil and Matt, how, how are things going? Yo. You're doing good, thanks. Uh, Phil. Yes. I've got, all right, i got two things I want to happen this week for Razorback Baseball. Today and the, tomorrow and Wednesday. I want uh, Kendall Diggs to stop taking two strikes. He okay, takes what way else? too many pitches early in the count. And I hope the Ty Wilson hit the ball. He was 0 for 12 at uh, Alabama, I do believe. Is that correct? Uh, 11. Well, actually 0 for 10. Okay. Yeah, I think there are going to be some changes as far as the outfield is concerned. Uh, Dave Van Horn said Peyton Holt is the left fielder now. And Peyton got a chance to be out there in back-to-back games. And uh, I, I don't think it's a matter of would he be able to hit because he can hit, and he can hit almost anybody. It's could he play the position. And he really did look like a real left fielder yesterday. To me, he didn't look like an infielder learning the outfield on the fly. He looked like an outfielder who, who knew what he was doing when he went up against the fence or was charging a ball towards the line or charging in – for a base hit. So, yeah, I mean, you, it's, you can't keep right now who's your best hitter out of the lineup, and Holt right now is that, at least statistically he is. Um, he wouldn't have been able to take over third base because Sprague Lott is hitting, and Sprague Lott is a better third baseman. But what they're looking for from corner outfielders right now, they're not getting, which is, which is power production, run production, and getting on base. And, and it is alarming to see that Kendall Diggs now has an on-base percentage that's under 400. He has gotten himself in a tough count, as Brendan mentioned. Um, but this is also one of the things that made Kendall the kind of hitter he was last year is that he did work the count, and he would battle, and he might be maybe a little bit too passive at times uh, right now. So you definitely got to get digs going. But he's got the track record of somebody that was one of the better run producers in the SEC last year. So... I got faith that he can he can get back to that, um, but it's 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 so what's the term here? It's so unbalanced between uh, offensive production on the infield and the outfield. A lot of times, your best hitters are your left fielder or your right fielder, and in some city, some years, it's been the center fielder for the Hogs. Guys like Christian Franklin and and uh, Tavian Josenberger and Dominic Fletcher. Uh, they don't expect that out of Wilmsmeyer, but you can't be a zero right now, and, and, and he's just not getting on base. So I think they may try Edmondson. And these next two days uh, against Texas Tech may give a little window into seeing what the idea is for the weekend against South Carolina. Appreciate the call, Brent. Thank you very much. 877-377-6963 if you want to get with us on anything about that. Hey, you know the NBA playoffs are beginning. Is that today? NBA playoffs are starting Oh, I was going to say that. Not, not really. It's the play-in game, but I forget uh, well, you're doing a thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, they call it the play-in. It's the uh, it's um, the first four. It's the first six, isn't it? <laughs> well, two of the teams in the in the East they have losing records. It's like, yeah, let's add more people to it that are seven games below five hundred. They should make the playoffs. It's the everybody. It's every the professional sports are turning into everybody gets a ribbon. Like it, it really is. It's ridiculous. Well, you can watch the ribbon and you can watch the play-in games, the play-in tournament at Twin Peaks in Rogers. It's the best place for all things hoops. And uh, they all have all the NBA playoff action at Twin Peaks in Rogers. Whenever it's being played, they'll have it on one of their thousands of televisions. Sports headquarters is Twin Peaks and Rogers, 29-degree draft beer, made from scratch fan favorites and sports blasting from every angle. You'll get the ultimate game day experience at Twin Peaks and Rogers or TwinPeaksRestaurant.com and get your ultimate game day experience to go. More TVs, bigger screens, and scenic views. More to watch at Twin Peaks. Mike Irwin says he's ready to go. We'll talk with Mike from Pig Trail Nation in just a moment on Halftime. 
You can now download our new app in the iTunes or Google Play Store. Listen anytime and anywhere on your favorite mobile device. This video is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned, Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com. Thanks for watching us here on ESPN Arkansas. Download the brand new Hit That Line Now app in the Apple and Google Play stores. ESPN Arkansas, more than just radio stations. Call or text the McClarty Daniel hotline at 877-377-6963. McClarty Daniel, a vehicle for every lifestyle. When you're looking for a new car, you want to shop for a vehicle you love with an organization you trust. You've probably heard that McCarty Daniel means making deals, but what I'm inspired by the most is that McCarty Daniel means making a difference in our community. When you buy a vehicle with McCarty Daniel, you reinvest right here in the community, in our schools, in our little leagues, in our food banks, and our people. So you're not just making a purchase, you're making a difference too. Come see us at any of our six locations in Northwest Arkansas. Tommy Craft here. When it came time for new gates and some fence repairs at my home, the fence man was my first call. The fence man does it all, from large commercial jobs to small residential repairs. Wood privacy fence, vinyl fence, commercial or residential chain link, even custom wrought iron fencing. 479-782-3936. 18 months, same as cash financing with approved credit is now available. If it involves fencing, the fence man does it. The fence man. He ain't afraid of no work. 479-782-3936. It's a dandy white perch. Big old slab. C'est bon, Sakhalin. One beautiful crappie. It's a paper mouth. <laughs> Some serious crappie. Nice spec. We got crappie. They might go by different names, but all prefer the same thing. Bobby Garland, America's favorite. White perch, slab, Sakhalin, paper mouth, crappie, spec, crappie baits. I call it dinner. Bet Online is the number one source for all your sports betting this season and every season. You'll find the latest odds, team matchup info, player news, and game trends all at Bet Online. Bet Online features live betting, free contests, and live scores for almost any sport or game imaginable. The fastest and easiest way to bet all your favorite leagues and events. Go to betonline.ag to join and receive your 50% welcome bonus with your first deposit. Make sure you use the promo code BELIEVE to receive your rewards. Bet online where the game starts. Are you looking for the best Razorbacks insight and analysis? Hell yes. How about listening to an Arkansas football legend? Matt Jones, all he does is make big plays. What's the voice of the Hogs have to say? Hey, what a great crowd last night. Don't forget about the Omahogs. The Hogs are going to Omaha. Matt Jones, Chuck Barrett, and Phil Elson, the best in the business. On the Hit That Line podcast network. Go to hitthatline.com or search Hit That Line wherever you listen to podcasts. Don't forget to rate, review, subscribe, and share. Madonna has gone from like a virgin to like a surgeon. You can try to nip and tuck from the curse of sin, but eventually death is going to win. God will do major surgery on this sin-filled world, and when he does, people will try and hide their faces from him. Even plastic Christians won't be exempt. Look up Isaiah chapter 2 and see how the spiritual world renders this an immaterial world. I'm Pastor Abe from Woodland. Read about it. This video is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned, Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com. Thanks for watching us here on ESPN Arkansas. Download the brand new Hit That Line Now app in the Apple and Google Play stores. ESPN Arkansas, more than just radio stations. Call or text the McClarty Daniel hotline at 877-377-6963. McClarty Daniel, a vehicle for every lifestyle. When you're looking for a new car. Yo.
You're listening to Halftime with Bill Elson and Matt Jones. Want to jump in the conversation? Call or text ESPN Arkansas on the McClarty Daniel Hotline, 877-377-6963. Now, here's Phil Elson and Matt Jones. We got Mike Irwin with us from Pig Trail Nation here on a Monday morning, and we always appreciate that on the McClarty Daniel Hotline. Hey, Mike, how you doing? <laughs> well, I had to make a quick run back home to get my cell phone. Otherwise, you wouldn't be talking to me, but I'm doing good. Man, I would, uh, I'd feel naked the moment I walked out of the house without that, man. It's, it's like not wearing pants. I was going to ask, how, how long did you go before you noticed that it was missing? Well, I looked up about 11.10, and I really, I knew you guys were going to call 11.15. I thought, I can't make it home in five minutes, so I did did my best, but didn't make it. Oh, so you were driving home. You heard us cursing your name for a whole segment, right? No, I didn't turn the radio on because I knew what you'd be saying, so I just, <laughs> I just got home as fast as I could. No, we were being nice and very understanding and everything, and we appreciate you joining us right now. Um, let's start with the spring game. Um, I didn't watch. I listened a little bit. I, I had my head in baseball for the weekend, so... What what stood out to you from Saturday's spring game? Well, it clearly was scripted for success. Anytime you have the twos or the ones going strictly against the twos both ways, offense and defense, you're going to be successful. And uh, last year they didn't do that. Last year we saw a lot of ones versus ones, and, and the offense didn't look very good. And then in the fall we saw what happened. Uh, I understand why he did it that way. You've got a new quarterback. You want him to be successful. You want the fans to see that. And it worked. Taylor Green was was impressive. Now, yeah, he didn't have the pass rush that he would have gotten if they had gone up against the ones. But he threw some, he threw some nice passes with hands in his face. Uh, he hit, hit some pinpoint passes that were contested. Uh, I was impressed with the receivers. They didn't get wide open at times, but they they caught the ball. So you know, and then I was impressed with the running game guys. Uh, to Quinton Jackson uh, from from I guess Utah 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 right I keep forgetting where he came. He's a from. Texas kid, but he went yeah, yeah he, was Utah he, was, years. he was running through some big holes at times, but there were some times when he made his own holes, and so I think that was impressive. I mean, what people don't want to they keep talking about this offensive line, and I've really watched them and. You know, Sam Pittman joke, he's the oldest grad assistant in the country. He's also the best. Eric Mateos has got the best helper out there. And the two of them have teamed up to coach this offensive line. And I'll just tell you, I can always be wrong, but I believe after watching them work with these guys and then you've got a new starting center, two new tackles, and the word is they're going after another uh, portal transfer in this, this now that this spring is over who will be here this summer. I mean, you got a reworked offensive line with, with a new attitude and good coaches. I, I think it's going to work, guys. Hey, hey, Mike, I, I want to ask you, we, we lost, I thought, a, a kid that will get drafted in our field goal kicker. And, and you know special teams is going to win or lose at least one, maybe two games for you, I think, to the Florida game. We won that that game based on Florida State or Florida's not being – not being able to run their special teams the correct way. Is our special teams going to be a strength? How's our field goal kicker going to be? No, right now that's, you, you know, you, you, you can't have nice things. Isn't what they always say about right. Razorback fans. Some things get better. Somebody, something else gets worse. I think he, it's, it's Sam Pittman will have fewer decisions to make now on, four, on fourth down. <laughs> He's probably going to have to go for it instead of trying to kick field goals based on what we saw. It didn't look very good. Well, hey, that's at least you have a game plan for it. You know, if you know you got to get inside the 30 instead of inside the 50, at least you know so you can call you're in four down territory, then then you, you plan accordingly. Sure. I mean, it makes the decision making a little easier. Mike, you're telling me the thing that I needed to hear. You know, it's like when like last year we I st we started we started thinking about, well, what's the season going to look like? Uh, in spring, when Clay tells us that the tackles really looked like they were struggling, that was the that was the the clue, you know that that that, that, that we're, you might be in for a tough year. The what you're telling us right now is you got the right people to tackle, and it sounds like you got the right guy in Addison Nichols at center. So, you know, I mean, there's you, you, offensive coordinator, quarterback change, yeah, big changes at running back and everything, but it has to start 
with those three positions. And it sounds like, I mean, we don't know because we won't really even know until we play Oklahoma State. And then you start to get a sense. But it sounds like when I heard the things a year ago and I'm hearing negative things about about the tackles, I'm hearing the opposite right now. That's telling me should be in for a better year. Well, in those two scrimmages where we did see some ones versus ones, there was a big difference in the production. of the, They still, Taylor Green still threw a couple of touchdown passes in each scrimmage, but he threw a couple of picks too because he had hands in his face. And, and you know, there's another thing about the spring guys that we haven't even talked about, and that's this blow the whistle because you can't tackle the quarterback. I mean, Taylor Green would have probably scored three times on long touchdown runs without those whistles because he got whistled with some guy reaching out and touching him, and there's no way that's a tackle in a real game. That's another thing this quarterback does. He, it's the running aspect. I mean, he can fly. So it, it all looks good. I don't want to overplay the offensive line. They still, at times in those one versus one scrimmages, there were still some times when they got to the quarterback. But it's better. I promise you it's better. Hey, Mike, I want to ask you about our defense a little bit. I know we have to replace the linebackers. Do, do you think or how did, did anybody stand out on the defensive side of the ball to you? Yeah, you know, the pass rush was just really good. And it, they stopped the, the – and I want to point this out, and I've already said this. The number two offensive line looked like a bad mid-major offensive line. They weren't very good. So – Pity the poor running backs that had to go up against those guys. Uh, August Day Stav is already transferred. I mean, they stuck him behind those guys, and he, he got about five yards on about eight carries, and now he's gone. That's another bad thing about the transfer portal. That kid was promising. I mean, he was just getting started, but he doesn't you know, feel good about where he's at after the spring, so he's gone. That's, that's the world we live in now. Any feeling like they might need to replace him at running back as far as getting one out of the portal? Or are you in a, you know, you're in a really good spot as far as depth was concerned, and he was one of the reasons why. So you, know, you kind of got to yeah. like somebody now, right? Well, we'll see. I, Pittman, I don't know if he was asked about that after the – I didn't go to that press conference, but I don't think they knew at the press conference. So he'll get asked at some point. We'll see what they do. But they still look pretty good. Uh, now, if you start getting injuries, then that's another question. But I'd, I'd say right now they're okay at running back. Uh, Mario, so ask about basketball. I haven't had a commit come in yet. I, there's no reason to, to to fret about that, really. Cal himself said this is going to take longer um, just because of the nature of the portal. And it had kind of you know just opened in the case of Kentucky. And some of those kids that he had recruited to Kentucky – now have reopened their recruitment. And, and I think to them, that doesn't mean I'm just following Cal to Arkansas. Yeah, they're looking around at potentially where they can go. But, like, I, everybody's expecting you're going to get a, a player or two off the Kentucky current roster. Uh, I know Big Z went into the transfer portal. Aaron Bradshaw went into the transfer portal. You'd love to get maybe one of those two big guys. And, and I think in our minds, we're all just sort of expecting that a chunk of the Kentucky recruiting class decides to come to Arkansas too. The only question is, you know, when do we start finding out a little bit about this? You know, with Musselman, let's just be honest, guys, he was talking to a lot of these recruiting. You're not supposed to do that, but we all know what happens. And so even, even a hint of somebody coming in here, the people that cover recruiting with Arkansas basketball would know about it because Musselman would tell them. I don't, at least right now, I don't think they have that kind of relationship yet with Calipari. I don't know if they will. They're, I think they're having to go through other sources to try and figure out what's going on with recruiting, and I think that's why we don't even have rumors right now. But And people are getting a little antsy. I mean, Cal comes in here, has the press conference, everything's great, then he goes off to California and sort of hadn't heard from him since then. So I think people just are sitting there with their fingers crossed going, hey, we need some information now. Let, let's get some good news here. And as of this morning, we don't have any yet. Okay, baseball. Uh, so you lose two out of three to Alabama. Uh, some people get nervous. You lose ball games. I think it's more of an idea that, um, that it just struggled to score runs this weekend. Three runs in the last 25 innings. That would make you nervous. You just hope it doesn't keep happening. That's, that's what this is about. 
well, you got this debate now, and I go, here's what I do. I don't look at Facebook groups because there's a gang mentality. When you get, like, our Razorback Nation uh, Facebook, you don't want to go there, guys. That's like walking into a bad neighborhood at midnight. <laughs> you don't want to be there. But what I do is I go to people that are friends on Facebook with each other, and I know them to be Razorback fans, and I read the debates they're having. And there's a debate. It's back to that old Nate Thompson. I'm telling you guys, he, this stuff doesn't work. We need to go back to small ball. And then other people are, are you kidding me? Dave Van Horn knows what he's doing. So then I go look at the numbers. And it's not very encouraging right now. I mean, I think they're down around 10th, 11th in, in, in team batting, or 9th, 8th, I think, in team batting. But then it drops in hitting to 11th or 12th, uh, run scored 11th or 12th. They just don't generate they've, – they've had timely hitting and scored runs in the right places, which is why they were to, able to, to sustain that winning streak. But there's an issue there, and Dave Van Horn acknowledged it earlier in the year. I think we all thought it was getting better, and now it kind of goes backwards. But then baseball, what is it? It's week to week, guys. It can change at any given time. So I don't think there's any reason to panic. But, you know, you, you – You'd, I'd like to know what's going on behind the scenes. I'd like to be in some of those meetings and find out well, how are they going to address this issue. Because, and then other people think, well, come on, you play two, you really need to play two midweek games before you go on the road. Now you got two more midweek games. Are we at a point in the season where you maybe just play one mid midweek game or no midweek games? There's all this debate going on, and I don't know what it means. Well, we'll have a little more answer, I think, by the end of the week when they're playing against South Carolina. And, Mike, we'll leave it there. we got to run. Appreciate you hopping on with us today, and good luck uh, keeping your phone with you, all right? Yeah, I need to put a lock on it or something. I don't know. Thanks, something, Mike. Something. <laughs> need, a, need a warning buzzer to go off when I walk away from it. Yeah, that's right. Well, they have those kind of things. It's Mike Irwin with us each Monday from Pig Trail Nation. Uh, stay with us. We'll wrap up the first hour of Halftime right after this. This is Halftime. Before you buy that next car or truck, stop by Broadway Motors in Van Buren. The best of the best for two straight years. Michael and his team offer the best prices on the best quality pre-owned vehicles in the River Valley. They invite you to stop by and check it out for yourself. Or if you prefer to check out their inventory online or even do your financing online. Michael has built his reputation as a husband, father, and owner-operator since 2006. Broadway Motors, 806 Broadway in Van Buren or online at broadwaymotorsar.com. This is a public service announcement for hard seltzer lovers. Neutral Vodka Seltzer has arrived. Made with simple ingredients like vodka, seltzer, and real juice. Neutral tastes good. Like, real good. So good that you'll never want to drink another artificial tasting seltzer again. Neutral's light and refreshing taste will show you what a vodka seltzer can be. Try Neutral, the one with the umlaut. Copyright 2023 Neutral Distilled Spirit Specialty, Los Angeles, California. Enjoy responsibly. Remodeling your bathroom? Don't let your imagination be limited by out-of-the-box shower doors or tub enclosures. Arkansas Glass & Mirror is your local source for all things glass, including plexiglass, mirrors, and shower doors since 1964. Arkansas Glass & Mirror has more selections, better prices, and the experience to help you build the shower of your dreams. They also have the only showroom in the area to help you create those dreams. Professional installation and professional service. Only at Arkansas Glass & Mirror, 1316 South Zero, Fort Smith, or online at ArkansasGlassAndMirror.com. After I drop the kids off, I have to run across town for a meeting, hit the gym during lunch. Jake has soccer tonight, and Emily has gymnastics. Oh, did I turn on the crock pot this morning? <laughs> with a never-ending to-do list, it's easy to forget something important, like setting up a life insurance plan with Shelter Insurance. Your local shelter agent can show you how to create a safety net for your family. Shelter Life Insurance Company, Columbia, Missouri. Call your local shelter agent, Chris Dooley, at 479-646-6792. Can you explain the infield fly rule? Neither can I. But I can help you navigate a variety of legal issues, from divorce to personal injury to estate planning. I'm Jackie Mock with Mock Legal Solutions, a new law firm offering affordable flat fees with payment plans available. You get an ace at the price of a minor leaguer. Now that sounds like a grand slam to me. Call Mock Legal Solutions for your free consultation, 479-769-1505. Real advice, reasonable price. Need a little extra cash? Go see Rusty at Golden Jim Pond, 310 West Center in Greenwood. 
Get the money you need with loans on jewelry, guns, tools, and electronics. If you're looking for a gift, they have a large selection of jewelry to choose from, and Rusty can take care of all jewelry repair. Stop by Golden Gym Pond today, 310 West Center in Greenwood, or call 996-2792. Open 9 to 5.30 Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, and 9 to 3 on Wednesday. Golden Gym Pond. Hey, it's Ty Richardson for Papa's Pub and Pizzeria. I want to talk about their pizza today. The Goob Special with extra pepperoni and rib rub on top. The Parm Special with double mushroom and jalapenos. Don't forget about the bacon cheeseburger and everyone's favorite, the old trash can. Swing on by Papa's Pub and Pizzeria at 508 Garrison Avenue in downtown Fort Smith. Or give them a call at 479-783-9941. Papa's Pub and Pizzeria, the best darn pizza in Fort Smith. Perhaps the world. The tires on your vehicle go round and round, but when they don't, go to Van Alma Tire. They have tires in their name. That's their specialty. Van Alma Tire is all about tires. They have all the name brands and private labels available for you and in stock. So when it comes to getting tires for your ride, it's worth the drive. And financing is available. Ask for details. Whatever your tire needs, check out Van Alma Tires on Highway 64 between Van Buren and Alma. Ready to get you rolling on new tires at Van Alma Tire. Your home for every Razorback football, basketball, and baseball game. ESPN 95.3. Welcome back into Halftime Live from the Crabtree RV Studios. Crabtree RV Center in Alma, where we make your dreams come true. Well, here's one former Kentucky player that the Razorbacks will not be getting. Aaron Bradshaw, a seven foot one, uh, still a freshman, is a rising sophomore is uh, going to be transferring to Ohio State. Uh, This according to the SB Nation site that covers the uh, Ohio State Buckeyes. Uh, Numerous other accounts on uh, the Twit are saying the same thing. So that's one guy I thought may end up coming here. I also saw that uh, Big Z, uh, the Lithuanian, is apparently giving Mark Pope a chance to re-recruit him. He's going to sit down with them, see if uh, if he wants to go back to Kentucky. But he's already in the portal right now. So yeah, that's the, you. You wonder, you know, what how that conversation goes. Um, you wonder which Arkansas players that are in the portal could come back. You know, I, I know Mark. Mark's made a, a a move. Has Blocker made a move? A commitment to somebody has battled. Like I'm, I'm thinking of some of the other guys that, you know, these are proven guys that you know. Uh, that you think one that they're going to improve, they're going to get better, but you've seen what they can do at uh, uh, at this level, and and they they can play. They're 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 SEC caliber guys. You know, and and getting the yeah, get I think getting kids with it with experience is is very important for the for the first iteration of the John Calipari Razorbacks, but I think it's also just as important to be able to land a couple, three of those recruits mm-hmm. that have reopened their recruiting. Mm-hmm. You know, Bradshaw is, has already made his choice, um, but kids like Boogie Fland, uh, Jaden Quaintance, th- those guys, you you really want to see him be at Arkansas because you need, you need freshmen coming in too. If we're going to put a program together, yeah, you got to have the incoming freshmen. We also have to have a second hour of halftime and then a third after that. So you can call us, you can text us. McClarty Daniel hotline open. As we get into hour number two, 877-377-6963. Second hour of halftime, right after this. The Camping World RV Expo is coming to the Choctaw Casino and Resort in Pecola, Oklahoma, April 18th through the 21st. Admission and parking are free. Tour over 50 fully staged new RVs starting at less than $5 a day. Plus, take advantage of special RV Expo pricing. Participate in the ultimate RV giveaway for your chance to win a new RV and more. Don't miss the Camping World RV Expo at the Choctaw Casino and Resort in Pecola, Oklahoma, April 18th through the 21st. Learn more at CampingWorld.com slash Pecola. Certain restrictions apply. For more details, visit CampingWorld.com slash Pecola. 
The Wave Rural Connect Shoal Creek Zone is open. Fast fiber internet, TV, and home phone available. This covers Midway, New Blaine, Scranton, Delaware, and other areas. Even if this isn't your zone, check your address. We might be available for you. Get your whole home solution. Internet, TV, and phone from a local provider. Go to signup.waveruralconnect.com or call 1-833-492-8372. Arkansas Valley Electric and Wave Rural Connect. Changing the communities we serve. Looking for a change? For a limited time, we're offering up to a $15,000 hiring bonus and a $3,000 referral bonus for maintenance techs, including electricians and refrigeration techs. Ask a friend who works at Simmons for more information, and you can both win. Simmons offers vacation matching, a 401k plan, and premium health care for team members and their families through our care clinics at no additional cost. Learn more at workatsimmons.com or stop by the Fort Smith City Hiring Center at 4900 Rogers Avenue, Suite 103 in Fort Smith. Find out more about the $15,000 hiring bonus and start getting paid sooner with same-day hiring options. We look forward to seeing you. Flu vaccines, both regular and high dose for seniors, are now available at Law's Drug Store in Fort Smith. Call 452-6116 to schedule your shot appointment. Usually there is no cost when covered by your insurance. Law's Drug has COVID vaccines, RSV vaccines for ages 60 plus, pneumonia and tetanus shots are also available. Law's Drug Store, 6802 Rogers Avenue behind Outback Steakhouse. Law's Drug Store, open six days a week to safely care for you and your family. Happy birthday, dear Megan. Happy birthday to you. Why did they have this party outside? Someone's cake. The mosquitoes are terrible. Let's get out of here. I'm getting eaten alive. Mosquitoes sucking the life out of your party? Call Mosquito Joe for an effective, affordable solution for keeping your backyard bite and itch free. Satisfaction guaranteed. Visit Arkansas.MosquitoJoe.com for a free quote or call 479-202-9960. Mom, everyone's leaving. This bite. MosquitoJoe.com. Outside is fun again. ESPN Arkansas weather. Sunny sky today. Our high temperatures this afternoon will be in the low to mid 70s. Later tonight, nice and clear and overnight low in the upper 40s. Saturday, blue sky, sunshine. Our high will be into the upper 70s to lower 80s. Sunny breezy on Sunday. I'm Sally Russell with your forecast on ESPN Arkansas. The weather is brought to you by Shamrock Liquor Warehouse, 5609 Midland Boulevard, your leader in fine wines, beers, and spirits. KERX Paris Fort Smith. This is Halftime, coming at you from the Crabtree RV Studios on ESPN 95.3. Coming to you live from the Crabtree RV Center Studios. Broadcasting on ESPN Arkansas and streaming on hitthatline.com. Live from the Bush Light Studio. Don't ask me if I'm all right. Well, he said dominate, and we're not doing it. We're going to go get one and celebrate on somebody else's show. Bill said you had very motivational words at halftime. It's halftime with Bill Olson and Matt Jones. From the bottom of my toes to the top of my head. I have zero respect for saying no ma at halftime. Here we go. Right now, on the McClarty Daniel Hotline, 877-377-6963. Now, here's Phil Olson and Matt Jones. Welcome into hour number two of halftime on ESPN Arkansas and hitthatline.com. Phil Elson here with Matt Jones. The C unit, Kristen Johnston, is producing. We'll have Nate Olson from Scorebook Live in about 15 minutes, uh, taking a look at uh, maybe some of the players that John Calipari may be recruiting from inside the state of Arkansas. Get in a little bit of Kane Archer. He's got a new teammate to throw to for the upcoming high school football season. And uh, we'll have Connor O'Gara on at 115 from Saturday down south. Uh, let's see, Matt, over the weekend, I watched a little bit of the Masters, um, but I mostly had my head in the uh, baseball clouds for Arkansas at Alabama. Watched a little bit of the Pirates losing on Thursday, but I'm not going to count that one because I've watched two games and they've lost them both. So you know how I think about that. Um, didn't watch any of the Masters yesterday because it was pretty much all baseball with a one o'clock first pitch and uh it just sounds like i missed 
greatness, I think, more than anything else. The Masters is special, uh, no no question about it. I mean, what, what Scotty Scheffler, what he was doing, uh, I mean, driving the ball better than everybody. Uh, when he did get in trouble, he would get out of it. Uh, he was just the most consistent. He, he was, it was, it, it really did remind me of, of, of Roy McIlroy about seven, eight years ago when he, he won a major by like seven strokes, kind of like what Tiger used to do. I mean, winning, winning Augusta by four, uh, to your next best. That's, I mean, that, that is just an absolute beat down. Uh, got to see Caitlin Clark on, uh, on SNL. I thought that was, that was pretty cool. Ryan Gosling and Chris Stapleton, uh, SNL Saturday night was, uh, it was, it was all right this time. Does she have a bit of a sense of humor? Yeah. You know, do you remember watching, uh, Michael Jordan do SNL years ago or Eli Manning or Peyton Manning? They, it's still, I remember, I remember MJ being in, um, being in the, uh, the Bears fans. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And he's kind of mm-hmm. real stiff, but you watch him on the court and MJ's not stiff at all. Caitlin, Caitlin, you could tell that she was she's she's all right. Like she was better. She kind of reminded me of when Eli hosted it, even though she she didn't host it. She just came in for a weekend update segment. But she uh yeah, yeah, she self deprecating a little bit, you know, making fun of everybody. Uh and and she was she was she was okay. Um and then, and then the Premier League, Phil, it's it's going down, man. Liverpool's trying to Amber Heard all day. Uh, they had a chance, got got beat. They got they tied last week, Man United, to get a point. Lost to Crystal Palace at home, but Arsenal they they lost to Aston Villa as well. So Man City, uh, right now has the lead, seventy three points, and then Arsenal and Liverpool seventy one. It's City's the one that controls their destiny now and uh watched a little bit of um uh, the gentleman on netflix it's a, a series it's based off the movie the gentleman that guy Ritchie did and and so I know it, you're a big fan of that of the movie love guy Ritchie. i li- like his work kind of reminds me a little bit of succession and ozark you remember ozark oh, yeah. um first couple seasons they're just kind of getting into it and spoiler alert the the brother it's like we're gonna have to lock him up. Like he's he's just messing it up for everybody. And he the oldest brother gets passed on in the lineage as far as you know what's given to him because he's a mess up. And the young and it's like yeah he 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 needs. I know it's family and all, but we need to send him to Australia because he's messing it up for everybody. You know. And it sounds like you had a weekend of watching a whole bunch of different things. I mean, you're running the gamut here, like five or talk six to, different uh, sports, two or three different series. Man, you got it going on. Talked to, uh, went to, was at Top Golf and talked to about five kids that were at. The, I was there about two o'clock, and there was some Razorback fans there that just came from the spring game, and so just kind of like what Mike was talking about, like. You like to kind of get a buzz from the, a, a younger crowd as far as you want to get the vibe or what they're talking about. And uh, you could see the excitement on their face. They they think this is going to be a different team, a different year. Uh, and they they like Taylor Green. Um, they, they like what they saw there. And I, I don't know. I'd, ha- I'd have to see a little bit uh, about you talking about these runs that would be touchdowns. Let's let's just hold. Let's just hold back a little bit because it's not a. Um, it's tough, you know. The, I mean, you you see, everybody thought KJ was going to be running all over the place. It's tough when a, with a four eight quarterback on a designed run. Not saying I think Taylor Green's a, a little more athletic, a little faster, and and will have some success. Uh, but let's just let's just hold up until he he takes some hits. Yeah, I would never know what to believe from a, from from watching a spring game. I know everything is so scripted. It's meant to, you know, you know, you're being scouted also too. So you, how much you're really going to show because it's on television. Those quarterbacks, the thing is, when you're running and you know you're not getting hit, they run straight up and run. When you see somebody hit, there's a totally different vibe to it when it's when the bullets are flying. Uh, and then you brought this up in the first first uh, segment, Phil. The, the NBA playoffs are here. They're 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 rolling into town. You got to play in games, but uh, most exciting time uh, for me in the NBA is when the playoffs get here. That's 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 real basketball. So is at least the teams that are playing today have winning records. Is there an NBA team in the in this uh, postseason in this uh, play in that's got a losing record? Yeah, there's the Hawks, the Hawks and the Bulls. I think the Sub Hawks 500 are 500 records, yeah. both of them. Yeah, the Hawks are 10 games under, Bulls are four games under. Yeah, t- <laughs> that's uh, <clears throat> watch one of these. No, neither of these teams can get hot at all. Didn't Billy Donovan say Donovan was? I don't know if he would have taken the Kentucky job or not, but he was more interested in trying to get Chicago positioned to make a run in the postseason. And here they are. They get a little chance, little chance. I don't even remember how this uh, play in tournament works. How many games it is? I think uh, it's a it's if you win the first game at home, 
Um, I see. I'm making. I don't know. I think if you win the first game, it's you. You, you win just it. Go right through. Yeah. You, okay. I don't know if you have to win two or three. I think if the away team wins, they have to win two. Um, but I, I, I don't know. I just because to me, they're not in the playoffs yet. You know, the playoffs start when they get in the playoffs. It's first four. Charlie and Camden is first, by the way, on the McClarty Daniel Hotline here in our twelve o'clock hour. Hey, Charlie. Happy Monday. What's up? And and Phil, I am just absolutely stoked today for some reason. I don't know what it is. I think it has something to do with the NBA playoffs. Let me explain what this is. So, Matt, the 10-9 go against each other. Whoever loses, they're out. Whoever wins that game plays the loser of the 7-8. That's okay. Okay. And whoever wins that game uh, out of 9-10 or whoever, they become the AC. So, let me tell you this. The Lakers are absolutely in a very terrible situation. And I was hoping that this would not happen because if they win tomorrow, which I think – I just don't see – people are going on TV today talking about the Lakers should sell the game tomorrow. And I don't like that idea because you get into a situation where one game, you, you're going to rely on beating either Sacramento or the Warriors just so you can get the eight seed, and I don't like that, but – I also don't want them to play Denver, but, hey, you know, you're probably going home anyway when you play them. So it just is what it is. They're kind of in a terrible spot. But, you know, Denver is the favorite. I'll tell you what, the West is loaded. Somebody's about to get left out that's really good. Matt, I did want to uh, mention something that you had talked about, though, with the offensive line and the football game. One thing I did notice, like, it didn't look like there were just – and I know we had a lot of issues last year, even in the spring with the tackles just getting their butts kicked. I thought for the most part, Taylor had time to throw the ball. And it had, he had time to get through his progressions. And I know it was one versus twos, right? Is that, but a lot of those two defensive linemen, they're going to play. I mean, they're going to be rotational pieces. So it wasn't like they were blocking nobody. And from what I have heard from some of the scrimmages is that the offensive line is much improved. And I, I hey, you can't get any worse than we were last year. Well, maybe you could, but that was just about as bad as I've ever seen it. So that's what I saw. And also another thing that I wanted to point out, it looks like he really trusts Broden and Armstrong. And he threw a ball from the left hash. It was like a comeback to Armstrong or somebody. Broden all the way over to the right. He threw that on time, and he threw a rocket from the left hash all the way over and up. The kid's got a heck of an arm, as we know, but it looks like he trusts these guys. You've had tall receivers, Matt, so explain to me the difference because I know there's obviously a difference between a guy that's six foot and six foot seven, but you, you kind of just want to put the ball where they can get it and no one else get it, right? That, that's kind of what you're thinking. Anyways, y'all have a good one. I'm an Armstrong fan too. If uh, if I was Taylor Green, I'd be trying to. If, if Armstrong's one on one, that's who I'm going to as well. I mean, I, I love some Armstrong. Uh, we had um, was it Singleton's dad on on Friday talking about Satania. I, I'm a Satania fan as well. Uh, that's that's cool to hear. Broden's doing well. Uh, you you brought this up too earlier, Phil. I I knew we were in trouble last year when the second game of the year we couldn't run the ball. Uh, against an inferior, like, what was it, like, Nickel State or something? You know, you're like, oh, we can't – well, we that wasn't in the game plan. wasn't in the game plan because you couldn't do it. And so, ho hopefully, that has to get back. You have to be able to run the ball. You have to have a couple guys on the outside that scares you or, or you're going to look pedestrian on offense. And so, I think at least we're getting the pieces in the, in, in the right spot. Brought to you by our friends at Pradco Fishing Lures. They also make – the uh, Booyah Mobster, designed by the Muddy Water Mob in Arkansas and Oklahoma, wins all the tournaments on Lake Dardanelle and Kerr Lake. If you're fishing submerged or matted grass, make sure you've got the Booyah Mobster to reel them in, and you'll find it at Lurnet.com and tackle stores all throughout Arkansas and Oklahoma, the Booyah Mobster. Uh, coming back in a moment to talk with Nate Olson from Scorebook Live on Halftime. This is halftime. Listen. 
listen to every Razorback football game this season right here on ESPN 95.3 and hitthatline.com. Drive a compact SUV that has more style, power, and technology with the 2023 Buick Envision at Harry Robinson Buick GMC right now. Get 1.9% financing for 60 months on remaining 2023 Buick Envisions or choose up to $3,500 in factory discounts. The Buick Envision, it's all about you and designed to inspire. Experience the new Buick at Harry Robinson Buick GMC. Exit 11 off of I-540 in Fort Smith. This is Dr. Charlie Liggett with River Valley Smile Center. We dial 782-8940. Coach Todd Holland, head baseball coach of the University of Arkansas Fort Smith Lions. I call 782-8940. Stay cool this summer with a York High Efficiency HVAC unit. Or for more information on endless hot water and high efficiency tankless water heaters, give us a call at 782-8940. That's 782-8940. Do you need gutters but think they're too expensive or that you need to get the soffit or fascia ready? No worries. Call the gutter guy. He does it all. No need to call multiple companies to get the right gutters for your home. Call the gutter guy. Quality, low maintenance, leaf-free gutters with a five-year warranty. The gutter guy also does vinyl siding and windows. The gutter guy. Over 30 years experience. Call 226-1259. Call the gutter guy. Summertime in Arkansas means pond and creek fishing, and nothing catches bass and bluegill in a pond like a rebel crick hopper. You can twitch it, pop it, walk it, and swim it. It's the ultralight fishing lure that looks and acts like a real grasshopper. The crick hopper works great in tandem with light spinning rods and reels with four or six pound fishing line. Available at Walmart, Bass Pro Shops, Academy, LureNet.com, and tackle shops everywhere. The rebel crick hopper. The Wave Rural Connect Shoal Creek Zone is open. Fast fiber internet, TV, and home phone available. This covers Midway, New Blaine, Scranton, Delaware, and other areas. Even if this isn't your zone, check your address. We might be available for you. Get your whole home solution. Internet, TV, and phone from a local provider. Go to signup.waveruralconnect.com or call 1-833-492-8372. Arkansas Valley Electric and Wave Rural Connect. Changing the communities we serve. Riley Farm Dental at the entrance to Riley Farms provides every type of dental care and procedure for you and your family from general dentistry, braces, implants, and cosmetics. Dr. Sparkman, Davis, and Farmer give all of their patients better lives with a better smile, more confident, and a comfortable experience every time. Riley Farm Dental, 5901 Riley Park Drive, Suite A at the entrance to Riley Farms. Now offering same-day crowns. Call 226-3500 for an appointment or visit RileyFarmDental.com. Hi folks, Larry Rath here for Rath Auto Resources and the Meineke Car Care Center where it's spring cleaning time. The lot is blooming with fresh road ready certified inventory and weekly specials that could save you up to $4,000. If you're keeping the car you have, let us take care of it for you in the Meineke Car Care Center with half off brakes and buy three, get one free on all tires. Better yet, trade today and save up to $4,000 during spring cleaning at Rath Auto Resources and the Meineke Car Care Center where all the happiest drivers are rolling with Rath. Just north of Phoenix on Towson, Fort Smith. Your home for every Razorback football, basketball, and baseball game. ESPN Make sure to follow Halftime on Twitter at Hit That Line AR and on Facebook and Instagram at Hit That Line. Call or text ESPN Arkansas on the McClarty Daniel Hotline, 877-377-6963. Now back to Halftime with Phil Elson and Matt Jones. On the McClarty Daniel Hotline with us right now is Nate Olson from Scorebook Live. You hear Nate uh, quite a bit during the football season. We have him on 
Fridays to preview what's going on across the state. And I'm bringing them on today because you got other things going on across the state. Some of them have to do with football, some not so much. Nate, what's going on today at Scorebook Live? Oh, we're we're turning out copy, Phil. So we got we've got our athlete of the week stuff going today, so we've got a lot of stuff. Hey, I, I wanted to tell you before we got into it. I appreciate you letting me know on the broadcast the other night that that was an ambulance at your stadium and not behind me because uh, with my new car and my surround sound, I thought I need to pull over. So I'm I'm glad that you were able to tell the listeners that that was uh, at the stadium. I, I I listen to you a lot because I'm driving these kids all over the place. So, but I thought you'd get a kick out of that. I, I heard that that ambulance. I was getting ready to pull over, and then you said, No, no. There's an ambulance here at the stadium. I hadn't even thought about that, that that would be a good reason to tell people why they hear <laughs> sirens, I, that it has it was nothing so to do with clear. what I'm I actually thought, seeing. It's what they might be thinking yeah, going on around I thought, them. I, I meant to text you that, but, yeah, so we, we, are, we, are constant, we are on the go all the time going to practice, and we listen to you, and you, you and Bubba do a great job. You know that I, I love the broadcast, but that, that was funny because I, I, my, my son was in the car, too. He was, like, looking around, and then, then you said, no, no, there's – the ambulance is here so thank you for letting us know that and well, uh, all so the great coverage i know one of the things that you that you've written about um at scorebook live is, is a question that was asked to john calipari at his at his press conference last week and, and mm-hmm. it also go it goes a little deeper also to the idea of um of not just basketball but all the sports and and how they recruit in-state talent yeah. and i guess the question is you know cal said He'll recruit in-state talent if they can play here. And I think that might be just a very simple way to look at it. Um, I can't imagine yeah. that you go to a state, you go to a place like Arkansas or really any other school, and you're not at least looking at the in-state players. I guess part of the question is how hard are you recruiting them? Well, that exactly. Well, and if you go to that story, you can go to that scorebooklive.com backslash Arkansas. And all that stuff on here that we're going to talk about, I – you know, I, I'm glad you had me on because there's a lot of things that I think that people will like to see that we're going to talk about. So go that go to this story and read it because I what I did was a deep dive on the recruits that that currently have um, offers that that had offer from Musselman, and then some of the former players. So when you go that that have been at Arkansas that have been good. So you go back. Um, Calipari only offered. Uh, some two guys played for him, rather Monk and and uh, Archie Goodwin, and then Nick Smith was heavily recruited by him. Probably going to get an offer, but then he canceled the visit. I don't think he, I don't know if he formally got an offer, but he was going to get one. But he'd had a wrist injury. They wanted to see him in person. Then he canceled the visit. So that's three guys. And then you look at the guys that have been at Arkansas that that have gone to the NBA. Bobby Portis. Now I think. He was so firmly committed to Arkansas that maybe not a lot of people offered him. I saw that Kansas did, some schools like that. Certainly probably fit the bill for Kentucky, being a McDonald's All-American like Nick Smith. Um, but uh, Daniel Gafford, Isaiah Joe, those guys did not have offers, you know, from Kentucky. And uh, Jalen Williams. So those are really good players that are playing in the NBA now. Uh, Mo- uh, Moody, too. Um, also was in the you know, from North Little Rock that went off to the academy to play for a couple of years. He did not have an offer from Kentucky. So what I was trying to illustrate there is that he has really high standards. I mean, like super high standards. And Arkansas has produced in the past 15 years some really good basketball players, but he hasn't recruited them. So is he going to lower his standards to recruit Arkansas guys? Is that, you know, he, he didn't really do that to, to recruit Kentucky guys. You know, Reed Shepard, he mentioned a couple of players, but that's like two or three out of 100, you know. So he did offer a few, but that that's what I, I think from our point of view, covering high school athletics is going to be interesting because Eric Musselman recruited Arkansas kids. You know, he, Pinion, um, Darian Ford, uh, several guys, Devo Davis, you know, those, those guys were all recruited and, and people were excited about it. And they were top 100, top 50 guys, but they probably would not have been recruited. You know, they did not get recruited by Kentucky. So that, that's, that's the reason I brought that up. And then I did that kind of dive in there to show, um, you know, 
the rankings of the kids at that time, the rankings of the kids now. I mean, J.J. Andrews, a sophomore, is ranked 18th. And I think that's a slippery slope when you start talking about stars and rankings and stuff because I'm not sure how all accurate some of those things are. But if you're going just by the numbers, you know, it's usually top 10 kids that he's going after, maybe top 20. So J.J. Andrews is one of the only ones right now going to his junior year that would kind of fit that mold according to the cumulative rankings of uh, 24-7 sports. How important is it, I guess, for for a guy like Calipari? I was just you you just kind of made me think of something that does he try to keep it kind of under wraps? Because if you hear Calipari offers somebody and you're anywhere, uh, wouldn't you just automatically try to make contact with that kid as well? I suppose, and I you know that from what from some of the people I know in Kentucky, I mean, he's really particular how he does that. Like he won't. Apparently, he won't offer kids until he's seen him in person. Mm-hmm. That's why the Nick Smith thing was was a deal because they wanted him, but I don't think he got an offer. And then you know he canceled his visit there, and they didn't get to see him at the Peach Jam and stuff because he was hurt. So yeah, I think he's very particular how he does things. And and don't get me wrong, I'm not saying and this is just I'm in a piece that points out some of the statistics and the rankings stuff. I am by no means saying that he has to recruit Arkansas guys to win or that he should or anything like that. But I do think it's it, – the reason I think it's, a, you know, an interesting thing to discuss because Arkansas basketball players, high school basketball, has been very good about the highest level it's been in decades. And you've seen guys that are playing in the NBA. You know, they, you, you've seen that where it's come to fruition, where they come through the entire – you know, high school and college process, and then playing professional basketball, but they still weren't good enough to, you know, in his eyes to play there. So, you know, we still are producing some really good players here. You know, Anar Botang going to Missouri, he was the best player this year. Did not get, I didn't mention him in the article, but he was a four star. Did not get offered by them. Uh, Arkansas wanted him really bad. I mean, they really wanted him. Musselman did. So just, just pointing that out, it kind of pointing out, you know, how good of a program he has and had that he didn't have to recruit four star guys. Like he could just, you know, get five star guys. And that's that's the level he was at. And then like I mentioned in the article, and where I think he can be at Arkansas too, and I was mentioned in the article, it was like I think seven or eight times I mentioned in there he was he had the number one class and every time he was there he's a top five class. So just illustrating the fact that he has discriminant taste He's taking guys that are top ten, one and done, McDonald's All American guys. That's who he's taking. And we've had a couple McDonald's All Americans. You know, we had Kalel Ware and Nick Smith, who I mentioned at North Little Rock, and we had Bobby Portis. Um, but not too many after that, but we've had a lot of high level players though, guys that are top fifty, top hundred, division one NBA guys. So I just I just thought that was interesting in light of him coming. I think he's gonna do a great job and I think he'll maybe do things a little bit different than he did at Kentucky. He hit the portal a little bit more, but um, people have asked me, you know, do you think he can win a championship final four? Absolutely. And I think he's going to have a, a more of a fire in his belly now because people have doubted him and they're kind of ripping him for coming to Arkansas. I think that's the motivation he needed to end his career on a high note. Maybe got a little complacent, missed some assistance that he had. Now he tweaks a few things does some different things, X's and O's wise, brings a couple of different, you know, older kids in, and they run. They're going. I mean, but Arkansas is going to have a ton of talent, and I think there will be a couple Arkansas players that do make the roster uh, over the next couple of years. But just thought it was interesting to check that out and, and to, to compare and contrast uh, some of our players against some of the, you know, the standard that he's had at Kentucky. Uh, tell me about, you know, I know you guys wrote about Kel Busby, who uh, plays at Pulaski yeah. Academy. He's a pitcher. Uh, was he a, was he the kid that, that stopped playing football in order to focus on baseball and pitching? And I don't remember what his arm yeah. injury was, but he came back from an injury, and he's, he's, he's pitching pretty well yeah. right now. And yeah. uh, hopefully this is somebody that makes it to campus, but I would imagine if he's coming off an injury that, you know, even if he is draftable for scouts in this upcoming draft, that they might be a little wary and, and he may end up getting to school. He did not mention the MLB once. He he talked about being on campus in June or July with some of the other pitchers taking summer school. So I don't think that's on his radar at all. 
uh, a guy who, as you mentioned, a terrific quarterback, won a championship there, and maybe one of the reasons why PA didn't get back last year, they missed him, um, but he had that UCL injury last baseball season at the beginning, and he was he was trying to decide if he wanted to play football during that baseball season as they would get ready for spring football, and then that injury occurred. That basically tabled any kind of football decision that he had. It made it easy. He wasn't going to play football. He wasn't going to be able to. So, uh, but he's rehabbed 53 weeks, and last Tuesday pitched 40 pitches against Mills and hit 92 miles an hour, which is one or two off of his best last year. So he is he is in good shape, and it just shows you the the modern marvels of medicine. How it is so high tech and so much better, probably in the 70s, 80s, when Tommy John first had that third. You know, they call it the Tommy John surgery because of the major league pitcher played for the Yankees and many other teams. But uh, guys can come back from it quicker, and he'll be on a 60-pitch count tomorrow. He's hoping by the end of the month when they start the regional tournament that he'll be throwing, you know, 80 pitches or more trying to win some games in the playoffs. But they're they're going to be careful with him. They obviously don't want to hurt it, hurt that again. So he's got he's doing this all under the doctor's care. The doctor told him the date that he wanted to come back. He'd been pitching to live batting practice, the teammates to get ready, and uh, he, he did a great job. He was throwing a lot of fastballs, mixed in his uh, curve and slider in there a few times, but he said he was mostly going with the fastball, and he said it was it was really moving for him and doing well. So good news for Bruin fans and good news for Razorback fans. I think this is a guy, he's a good character guy, comes from a great school, the football program with Anthony Lucas, that's obviously rubbed off on him, too, being in that great football program. So I think the Hogs are getting a good pitcher and a good kid, and and looks like he's going to be fully healthy by uh, next year if Dave Van Horn needs him uh, to pitch as a freshman. Hey, Nate, and, and just we're, we're kind of up against the break, so in just a couple minutes, okay. if you can, um, I know there's a new – uh, there's a new target for Kane Archer that's transferring into Greenwood from a high school in Omaha, Nebraska, and he's already yeah. got an offer from Nebraska, so maybe this is somebody that uh, that Coach Pittman may end up looking at too. Absolutely. I bet he'll be at the Arkansas camp this year. I, I, I don't have much doubt about that. Khalil Cham Davis, 5'10", 175, a little slot receiver with a lot of speed already attracted the attention of Matt Rule in Nebraska. I think he's going to get more offers. And, and now he goes to a good football program to a great one with a quarterback who is one of the tops in the country. So you've also got two other receivers opposite of you who went for over 700 yards, both of them. Grant Carnes went for 900 and Arrington, Isaiah Arrington, 750. So that's going to make it where it's going to be almost impossible to cover them. They, they still need to replace a running back, but – Archer's going to do more running, I think, this year, too. So, really good situation for all parties involved. I think he flourishes at Greenwood and gets several more Division One offers, and that's why I think he went there. Is that he knows uh, Archer from the youth football, the travel stuff, and uh, it's, just going to, it's just one more feather in their cap that's going to make them you know, more of a favorite. I think most everybody that does high school football predictions is going to have them is you know to win the championship again in 6a and this only solidifies that i think nate thanks for hopping on uh we'll do it again sometime soon okay thank you yeah you bet thanks guys thank you nate nate olson scorebook live uh we always appreciate his time he knows his high school stuff here uh we've got an open segment coming up 877-377-6963 is our McClarty Daniel hotline. If you want to get with us, halftime is back in just a moment. You can now download our new app in the iTunes or Google Play Store. Listen anytime and anywhere on your favorite mobile device. Just search Hit That Line now. As a roofer, spring means the start of my busy season, which means I've got to get organized with help from Beacon. I can save time with Beacon Pro Plus and 24-7 access to live pricing, delivery tracking, order history, and more. Plus, this spring, I can earn $1,000 and the chance to win a $25,000 backyard renovation just by buying my certain tea jingles online with Beacon. No purchase necessary. Now that's what I call a spring cleanup. Visit BECN.com for official rules and to start earning entries. 
This show is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Take a minute to check your social battery. How's it doing? It's easy to ignore your needs and spread yourselves too thin. Therapy can give you the self-awareness to build a social life that doesn't drain your battery. BetterHelp offers affordable online therapy on a schedule that works for you. Start the process in minutes and switch therapists anytime. Find your social sweet spot with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash like today to get 10% off your first month. This is halftime. At Southern Tire Mart, we look out for you and your vehicle. Come visit us for America's most trusted brands like Michelin Tires and top of the line service. You can depend on Southern Tire Mart and Michelin Tires to keep you rolling. Come see us at Southern Tire Mart, just off I 540, exit 14 in Fort Smith for Michelin tires that fit your needs and service that cares for you like family. Flu vaccines, both regular and high dose for seniors, are now available at Law's Drug Store in Fort Smith. Call 452-6116 to schedule your shot appointment. Usually there is no cost when covered by your insurance. Law's Drug has COVID vaccines, RSV vaccines for ages 60 plus, pneumonia and tetanus shots are also available. Law's Drug Store, 6802 Rogers Avenue behind Outback Steakhouse. Law's Drug Store, open six days a week to safely care for you and your family. Now is a great time to start your career at Simmons. For a limited time, we're offering up to a $15,000 hiring bonus for maintenance techs, including electricians and refrigeration techs. Simmons offers vacation matching, a 401k plan, and premium health care for team members and their families through our care clinics at no additional cost. Learn more at WorkAtSimmons.com or stop by the Fort Smith Hiring Center at 4900 Rogers Avenue, Suite 103 in Fort Smith. Find out more about the $15,000 hiring bonus and start getting paid sooner with same-day hiring options. We look forward to seeing you. After I drop the kids off, I have to run across town for a meeting, hit the gym during lunch. Jake has soccer tonight, and Emily has gymnastics. Oh, did I turn on the crock pot this morning? <laughs> with a never-ending to-do list, it's easy to forget something important, like setting up a life insurance plan with Shelter Insurance. Your local shelter agent can show you how to create a safety net for your family. Shelter Life Insurance Company, Columbia, Missouri. Call your local shelter agent, Chris Dooley, at 479-646-6792. Insurance company throwing you a curveball? Are they crowding the plate and not offering you a fair settlement? If you've been injured in a car wreck, you need an experienced attorney to fight for you. I'm Jackie Mock with Mock Legal Solutions. Licensed in Arkansas and Oklahoma. No win, no fee. Call Mock Legal Solutions today for your free consultation. 479-769-1505. Real advice, reasonable price. <laughs> I know we're always on the go, heading to Fayetteville, Little Rock, Oklahoma City, and you need a place to fill up. But not just for gas. I need snacks, drinks, and a restroom that doesn't make me throw up. That's why my new favorite pit stop is Jam Mart Number 10, located at 6201 Grand Avenue on the way out of town. I can't stop by without getting something from their hot box or a fresh made burger. That's Jam Mart Number 10, located at 6201 Grand Avenue in Fort Smith. Your home for every Razorback football, basketball, and baseball game. ESPN 953. I wasn't starting. Yeah, I didn't even think you were listening. I wasn't. Ready at all to say anything about anything interesting. Know that you do it. You wait around the conversation while I get stuck. Other than through. I was so distracted that I didn't even have it straight in my head. I didn't have my face on yet for the role of the feeding. Where I was going with it all I was suffering more than I let up The traffic morning news The phone, there's nothing stopping me now Say, 
Welcome back to Halftime with Bill Elson and Matt Jones. Got a question or comment for the guys? Call or text on the McClarty Daniel Hotline, 877-377-6963. Let's get back to the show with the voice of Arkansas Razorback baseball, Bill Elson, and Razorback football legend, Matt Jones. All right, I got a version of three up, three down for you here for uh, this weekend's baseball series against Alabama. Um, and uh, it's brought to you by Courtney Hollingsworth Auto Body, family owned and operated for over 40 years. They are your collision repair specialist in Northwest Arkansas. Uh, they achieved iCar Gold status. Only 15% of collision repair shops achieve that. It's the highest training level recognized in the industry. You can put your vehicle repairs in the hands of experts. Courtney Hollingsworth Auto Body. Uh, 479-751-3801 or CourtneyHollingsworth.com. Um, one thing too here, I, I'm not a, I'm not somebody that believes you got to have a, a losing weekend in order to, uh, uh, because eventually you're going to have one. Now I do also appreciate the idea that losses happen in baseball, but I have seen a, seen a team run the whole table. Um, and, and win an SEC championship. Whether or not that had anything to do with them losing to Nebraska that year, I, I don't think it did. Um, but right now it's an offensively challenged team. Up, well, first up, Peyton Holt has to. And for those who've been clamoring for him to get in the lineup, I know you got to be feeling pretty good about his chance now to be the everyday left fielder. Dave Van Horn pretty much said as much yesterday after the loss in the press conference that left field is, is Holt's. Um, but he wouldn't have had a chance to play any other position right now. You wouldn't have had him at third base because there's no reason to take out Jared Sprague lot. The opening has occurred because you're just not getting any, any production from corner outfield at the moment. And that's where, that's where you need some. You need your left fielders. You need your right fielders to hit. They got a field understood, but they got a hit. And Holt did that. Um, had the three-hit game, including the dramatic game tying home run in the ninth. Just always seems to have a flair for the dramatic. And then uh, almost knocked in a run yesterday with a line drive in the second inning that was caught in short center field. I guess I was more impressed with how Peyton looked in the outfield. Sometimes, <clears throat> Matt, the, Matt, you know there, like in, in sports, sometimes you'll see, well, I guess, it, I don't know if it works in, in, in football or anything or in any of the other sports. In baseball, you know, you can have <clears throat> a guy who's athletic and he's an infielder, and you put him in the outfield to see if he can play the position, and he just looks like an infielder who's at the wrong position. Um, Holt didn't look like that. He looked like an outfielder. He looked like somebody who can play left field. And even if he would struggle in left field, I think they would put him out there right now anyway uh, because that's the situation they're facing. Lovich has struggled in left, um, not in the feet, well, in the field a little bit, but at the plate more than anything. Edmondson has been a little hit and miss. And then there's the idea that maybe Edmondson moves into center field because Wilmsmeyer has, has really struggled. As Brent called earlier today uh, and pointed out, Wilmsmeyer went 0-4-10 in Alabama, and he is one for his last 20, which doesn't make any sense to me because he'd hit over 300 in the SEC uh, last year for Mizzou. Uh, so he's already hit this kind of pitching before. And maybe that has a little something to do with that. He's been scouted, and and um, teams have an idea how to pitch to him. But right now, he's not hitting. He's fielding well. So if you move Edmondson in the center field, then maybe there's you lose a little bit in the field. You gain a little bit with the bat. Um, so I love I love putting Holt in there, and I'm just impressed with somebody that went. It was I think it was almost a month. It was a little more than three weeks from his only other SEC start against Mizzou to the second game of the series against Alabama, and then he hits the game-tying home run of the ninth inning, um, which was uh, one of the really cooler moments of the baseball season. Uh, a second up is that all three starting pitchers went at least five innings, which doesn't sound like it's all that important or all that big, but it's the first time it's happened in an SEC weekend. You get six scoreless from Hagen Smith, lowered an ERA into the 150s with that. Mason Molina finished six, and Brady Tiger gave you five. Even though Brady didn't have his best stuff, um, allowing one run with the traffic he had on the bases, I was I was really impressed with that. Uh, Christian Fouch also is a, is the third up. He hit 101 miles an hour. 
um, in, I think that was Saturday's game. Wow. 101. He threw a pitch, and the video board monitor said 100. But Oliver, who's the SID for baseball, has track man on his laptop, and he's sitting up and behind me. Uh, and he said that it came in at 101 on TrackMan. So 100 is cool. 101 is just a little bit cooler. Uh, but we do worship at the altar of velocity a little bit too much. So that would be my first down, is the idea of velocity always being the first thing we mention when it comes to a pitcher. Um, you know, I don't know if you've seen this, Matt, but there's been a debate going from the <clears throat> from the uh, the players' union, Major League Baseball Players Association, where the, the, the head of the union, Tony Clark, has said that uh, they're blaming some of the rise in pitchers' injuries to the pitch timer, which I don't really think it has anything to do with it because the rise in injuries has occurred much more um, over the last 10, 15 years, and the pitch timer's only been around for two seasons in Major League Baseball and I think three or four in Minor League Baseball. It's about worshiping at the altar of velocity. It's always the first thing that we mention when you mention a pitcher instead of uh, that he's got movement on his fastball or he can hit the corners or he's got a good breaking pitch. And even the breaking pitches sometimes because of the, the um, camera technology that, that, that we have at our, at our disposal, you know, guys can spin the ball more than they have before because they have the video evidence of how to do it. You know, more velocity, more spin, I think means more stress on an elbow ligament. And I think that has a lot more to do with uh with 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 pitcher injuries than than a pitch timer so while i'm all while i'm giving a thumbs up to fouch because throwing 101 miles an hour is really cool i'm also one of the people that's probably guilty of worshiping a little bit at the altar of velocity here so i hope it doesn't lead to an injury for him because the kid's got an incredible future um what else? If I try to go to a to another down, a hey, three runs in the last twenty five innings of the Alabama series is a serious down. Uh, you got to find a way to score more than just three runs on solo homers. Those those are the only three runs that they scored after the third inning on Friday were solo home runs by Stovall, Sprague, Lott, and then Holt all on uh, all on Saturday, and. You know, I mean, some some folks are texting in, wondering, you know, are you do you panic about it? You know, what what back to back losses or everything? My third down goes to the idea of panicking after one weekend where you lost back to back games on the road in a place where Alabama, by the way, has beaten Tennessee two out of three, and South Carolina two out of three. Tennessee's got one of the more dangerous lineups in the entire country. They very well could be in Omaha. Hogs get South Carolina this weekend. That's a good team. Alabama's not – I don't think they're just a mid-baseball team this year in the SEC. I think that team's going to make a regional. They could make some noise. Um, no panic. There's no panic in the team. I don't think there's any panic in the coaches. And the reason is because of the pitching staff. Pitching staff will always settle things down. If you have the kind of pitching that this team has – it should be able to settle things down. It keeps you in games. I'd be more. I'd be more worried if they were going out losing ten to one. If they if they'd won thirty of the first thirty three games and then go out and lose ten to one and 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 nine to six, I'd be a little bit nervous because then you start worrying about the pitching a little bit. These hitters will come around. Kendall Diggs is much more what he was last year than what we've seen in the last three weeks. Sprague Lott's coming around. Stovall has come around. Souza. Hit and miss. He's a freshman. With Holt in the lineup now, maybe every day, I think you'll get a little more consistency from, from, uh, from the corner outfield. The team can hit a lot more than they showed this last weekend. It also does show you that in this sport, even the best teams can be pitched to. You see some of the numbers that Texas A&M is putting out there. I'd be very interested to see when these two teams meet because the Arkansas pitching staff is a heck of a lot different than even the Vanderbilt pitching staff than even the Kentucky pitching staff. So you can pitch to good teams. You can pitch to good hitters. That's what I saw from Alabama this last week, and that's your three up and your three down. 877-377-6963 for calls and texts on the McClarty Daniel Hotline. We'll come back 
And no, let's not. Let's take a phone call from Brian in Ozark, and then we'll have the break. Brian, you get to you got to turn your radio down before I put you back on, because you know how this is done. Three, two, one. Brian, you're on halftime. What's up? Hey, can you hear me? Loud and clear. Thank you. Uh, I was just curious. I mean, if you're a little bit concerned about Arkansas hitting, they really didn't look very good all weekend against Alabama. And I'm kind of concerned about Texas Tech because they – the record doesn't show what kind of team they are. I mean, they are a very good team. I mean, is that a concern to you? Uh, the, about so, hitting? Not hitting if it if it continues to happen. Look, I mean, they hit well enough against Ole Miss the week before. They really did. They hit well against San Jose State as well. Um, if it continues, you know, if 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 what Alabama did this last weekend um, is mimicked by South Carolina. And then after that, so on and so then I guess start to get worried a little bit. I don't think that that pitcher did anything truly special. I think Arkansas batters got themselves out a little. And as far as like Texas Tech is concerned, you see some really frightening numbers from them. They hit 324 as a team. They're they're scoring almost 10 runs a game. But these numbers are way skewed by where they play. They play in Lubbock. Um, I've been to that part of Texas. The Midland Rockhounds are a Texas League team. You couldn't trust the statistics coming out of that ballpark. That's a hitter's haven. Lubbock is a hitter's haven. So I see a team that in their last six games at home has scored 10 or more runs. But I also saw a team that scored a total of five runs in the last two games in Dallas-Fort Worth against TCU. So they're coming into a much different place. The numbers, the statistics for Texas Tech and their offense, I don't really think they they mean very much on the road at all. So... But I do think they're a good team, and I think these next two games will be uh, will be pretty important. Brian, it's good to hear from you today. 877-377-6963, R. McClarty Daniel Hotline. Now we'll wrap up hour number two in just a moment. Clogs? Nobody wants a clog. West Arc Plumbing knows that clogs are a serious issue. They can signal that bigger problems are on the way. So contact West Arc Plumbing while the problem is small. Slow shower and sink drains, gurgling toilets and outside cleanouts making a mess? Call 479-646-5151 today. West Arc Plumbing and expert drain cleaning since 1993. They keep you flowing. If you have slow drains or high water bills, call West Arc Plumbing and expert drain cleaning service. 646-5151. When you need legal help, turn to the law offices of Craig L. Cook. With over 40 years combined experience, the Cook Law Team works for you. If you've been injured in an auto accident, hurt on the job, a victim of nursing home negligence, or need help with bankruptcy, social security, wills, trusts, estates, or family law issues, Craig Cook will go to work for you. Call us today, 479-783-8000. The law offices of Craig L. Cook with locations in Arkansas and Oklahoma. We work for working people. Precision Overhead Door features the finest quality materials, installation, and service for all of your overhead door needs. Fully licensed and insured with the largest showroom in Northwest Arkansas, located at 1907 Town West Drive in Rogers and 416 North 10th Street in Fort Smith. Give them a call today at 844-PDS-DOOR or online at precisiondoornwa.com. Financing is available. Precision Overhead Door voted Best Garage Door Company of Northwest Arkansas and the River Valley. Precision Overhead Door. Arkansas Fuel Injection in Fort Smith has been providing quality work for all new and rebuilt diesel pumps and injectors for over 25 years. They are a certified diesel shop with a team of quality technicians that ensure the highest quality worksmanship and warranties all their work. They are open Monday through Friday 8 to 5 and has emergency service available 24 hours a day. For all your diesel pump, fuel injection, and parts needs, stop by Arkansas Fuel Injection, 6300 South 29th Street, Fort Smith. Call them today at 1-800-817-7709. Arkansas fuel injection barrels and brews bottle shop at the hub and chaffee crossing has everything you need for your favorite activities our knowledgeable staff will be glad to help you with the current specials and our new arrivals of must-have bourbons and whiskeys hit the cooler for some of the coldest beer in town or choose from our large selection of amazing wines order online or call ahead monday through saturday from 10 a.m till 10 p.m the hub in chaffee crossing barrels and brews voted best of the best in fort smith it will put a smile on your face now now your ideas don't have to wait now they have everything they need to come to life dell technologies and intel are creating technology that loves ideas loves expanding your business evolving your passions we push what technology can do so great ideas can happen right now 
Find out how to bring your ideas to life at Dell.com. Welcome to now. Hey, it's Ty Richardson for Papa's Pub and Pizzeria. I want to talk about their pizza today. The Goob Special with extra pepperoni and rib rub on top. The Parm Special with double mushroom and jalapenos. Don't forget about the bacon cheeseburger and everyone's favorite, the old trash can. Swing on by Papa's Pub and Pizzeria at 508 Garrison Avenue in downtown Fort Smith. Or give them a call at 479-783-9941. Papa's Pub and Pizzeria, the best darn pizza in Fort Smith, perhaps the world. Do you need an oil change but don't have time to drop off your car? S&J Express Lube will let you sit in your car while they do the work, and it only takes about 15 minutes with no appointment needed. Prices start at $35.99 for a 20-point inspection service. S&J Express Lube is open Monday through Friday 9 to 6 and Saturdays 8 till noon. You'll find them at 14818 Highway 71 South in Jenny Lynn. Check them out on Facebook, too. S&J Express Lube, your authorized pastoral dealer in Sebastian County. They are waiting on you now. It's your home for every Razorback football, basketball, and baseball game. ESPN 95.3. Hey, <laughs> Welcome back into Halftime Live from the Crabtree RV Studios. Crabtree RV Center in Alma, where we make your dreams come true. Uh, speaking of uh, Transfer Portal here, uh, Matt Talia Scott made her choice of where she's going to be playing next season, and she's staying in the SEC, committed to Auburn, which felt like a surprise because uh, um, Auburn's good, but not necessarily where I thought she may have ended up. I thought it might have been Florida. Um you know, with uh, with her Go Tigers thing, when Jersey committed to LSU, I thought maybe she was going to end up at uh, at LSU, but she's with a different Tigers, going to be playing for Johnny Harris at Auburn, and um, that means we'll get to see her once or twice a year. It's a uh, yeah, good for her. She's a talent. That's um, she had a she had one of the photos that she had. Um, there was there with her parents, and then there with Coach Harris, and then the other one was. Some kind of a <clears throat> some kind of a device that shoots money out to make it float all over the place, and she's shooting out hundred dollar bills, which just it was. I don't know. It's like it's saying the quiet part out loud, but now the out loud stuff is is perfectly permissible. But to me, that just I don't know. That kind of said something to me. She get that from James Harden, mm -hmm. or from uh, from ODB <clears throat> out on the field in the Sugar Bowl. It was definitely an interesting photo. Yeah, you could have done. Could, I guess if you'd have done that back in the day when <clears throat> paying players is illegal, that'd have gotten you in some trouble. That'd have gotten you uh, investigated. In this, in this case, not so much. Not so much. So we're still waiting to find out about where Sailor's playing, <clears throat> and still just the one, uh, one transfer portal commit for for Mike Neighbors' team, uh, Izzy Higginbottom, coming in from Arkansas State. And look, I'm gonna tell you, she's gonna score for this team. I don't, I don't know if it'll be 20 a game or something like that, but she's gonna get over 20 points. She'll get her points. There's no doubt. Um, you know, you're kind of trading, in a sense, you know, a player like Talia for a player like Izzy. It's just you can get one year out of Izzy, and Talia had three years left. We got another hour left on halftime. It's eight seven seven three seven seven sixty nine sixty three. Our McClarty Daniel hotline will be visiting with C. Uh, Connor O'Gara in about 20 minutes. Otherwise, you can get with us, and uh, halftime is right back. <laughs> Thank you. 
Spring is just around the corner, and Jelco Outdoors is ready with all of your spring fishing gear. Crappie, bass, catfish, Jelco has a great selection of rods, reels, and baits to help you fill that stringer. Spring turkey supplies are rolling in daily, and the firearms department is stocked up with ammo for outdoor shooting. Spring is almost here, so get outdoors and enjoy the spring season. Stop by Jelco Outdoors, 4600 South Zero in Fort Smith. For all your outdoor gear, think spring, think Jelco Outdoors. Hello, this is Sebastian County Assessor Zach Johnson here to remind you to assess your personal property by May 31st to avoid late penalty. You can do this in person at one of our three locations, over the phone, or online by going to www.countyservice.net. I would also like to remind any current homeowners or individuals buying their homes on contract to contact our office and check on your eligibility for the Homestead Tax Credit. Contact us today to see if you qualify. The Homestead Tax Credit can save you up to $425 off of your tax bill. This ad sponsored by Sebastian County Assessor and paid for by Amendment. 79. Are you an angler having trouble finding all the bait, tackle, and more for your fishing needs? Make a wait, bait and tackle. Now located in Fort Smith next to Wits Marine. On North 11th Street is your place. Make a wait, bait and tackle. Also has the largest selection of plastics in the River Valley. Reactor Innovation, Bobby Garland, Sue, Mega Bass, and more. Check out the Dial Rod and Reels. Make a wait, bait and tackle. 803 North 11th Street in Fort Smith. 479-926-9320. Also get your rod and reels repaired. Come see us next to Wits Marine at Make a Wait bait and tackle. Colorworks Paint and Body in Barling offers professional automotive painting, bodywork, and fabrication that is unsurpassed in talent and dedication. Owner Andy Harrod uses the latest in collision repair technology to ensure all damage is addressed, whether it's visible or hidden, and works with all insurance companies. Andy and his crew have the experience and commitment to give you complete trust in the repair of your vehicle, no matter the size of the job. Colorworks is located at 1206 Fort Street in Barling, across from Dollar General, and is on Facebook, where you can check out their work. Perry Robinson Salisaw Ford wants to buy or trade for your vehicle today, and they will give you top dollar. Pre-owned car values are at historic all-time highs, and your car today is worth more than it ever will be again. If you are driving a 2013 model or newer with 120,000 miles or less, bring it to Harry Robinson Salisaw Ford, and they'll give you more than any other dealer. Even if you don't want to buy a new car, they'll still buy yours. Harry Robinson Salisaw Ford, one mile south of exit 308 off I-40 in Salisaw. ESPN Arkansas weather. Sunny sky today. Our high temperatures this afternoon will be in the low to mid 70s. Later tonight, nice and clear and overnight low in the upper 40s. Saturday, blue sky, sunshine. Our high will be into the upper 70s to lower 80s. Sunny breezy on Sunday. I'm Sally Russell with your forecast on ESPN Arkansas. The weather is brought to you by Shamrock Liquor Warehouse, 5609 Midland Boulevard. Your leader in fine wines, beers, and spirits. KERX Paris Fort Smith. This is Halftime, coming to you from the Crabtree RV Studios on ESPN 95.3. Coming to you live from the Crabtree RV Center Studios. Streaming on hitthatline.com. Live from the Bush Light Studio. We're going to go get one and celebrate on somebody else's tail. Yeah. Well, said you had very motivational words at halftime. It's halftime with Bill Olson and Matt Jones. From the bottom of my toes to the top of my head. I have zero respect for saying no ma at halftime. For one back. It's vintage Matt Jones. Here we go. Right now, let's take the field. Call or text on the McClarty Daniel hotline. 877-377-6963. Now, here's Phil Olson and Matt Jones. Welcome back into halftime here on this uh, Tax Day Monday. Just reasons to celebrate, right? <clears throat> Everybody get their taxes filed? Did you get? Well, we're all 1099s around here, right? I took care of that a while back, and I feel really good about this too, Matt, because my mom is a CPA. She's done my taxes uh, ever since I can remember, and up until this year, just get pestered. You know, every day 
when am I going to get your taxes? When are you going to send these to me and everything? And I'm like, stop bugging me. I got things to do. And then I realize it's like, oh my gosh, she's got other people's taxes to do as well. And it's like four days until you got to file them. So I got to do it. I got those suckers done in early February. No pressure whatsoever. And no refund either, of course. Did Bubba give you a gold star? I figured that would maybe. Mom and gave me a mom gold star. Mom gave you a gold star for that. That's Phil, you're on top of it right there, man. That's pretty much the only thing I'm on top of. Leading today. by example right there. Uh-huh. The only thing I can stay on top of right now would be uh, would be my money. And it's only taken me 47 years to get to that point. <laughs> Sooner or later, I'll learn some other things to get a hold of as well. Uh, let's see. Nobody on, uh, no one on hold. So I see there's another Kentucky Wildcat that has entered the transfer portal. Another one. Uh, this is DJ Wagner. Uh, he is in the portal right now. Averaged 9.9 points, 3.3 assists. And that makes it, that is uh, five, five players that Kentucky has lost to the transfer portal. Uh, Bradshaw's already committed. Aaron Bradshaw committed to Ohio State. Uh, Taro is uh, uncommitted. Hart is uncommitted. Big Z is uncommitted. And now DJ Wagner is uncommitted. And they've got nobody that's incoming to them yet. And they've lost almost their entire recruiting class. So interesting times uh, for, uh, for Kentucky and very interesting times for Arkansas. Two teams that are going to look, I mean, Arkansas is going to look completely different. Did you think there was a chance that, that Mark might come back? Uh, Tremont Mark says he's going to go play for Texas. Um, I thought he might be one of the guys that you would, that, uh, that Cal might have thought of, uh, of, of maybe bringing back. I'm not sure who else, you know, would be on that list of players that, you know, he, he wants on his team to return from last year's Razorback team. He would have been first on my list. You know, I don't I don't know how he's going to put the team together. Um it is going to be interesting to see. I mean, coach Cal, what he he's not used to not having a top 10 class when when he's signed and I know you got to do the portal rankings in the in the high school rankings. So he he's going to get talent. I I think these first years, first year 100% is important. These first 2 years are very important to see, you know, how his legacy, how his tenure, how his time up on the hill is going to be he's and he wins i mean we he's uh i would i would have mark i i like blocker as well i'd call him but i you know i i don't know i'm sure they got people in in, in line to, to to fix the team up well there's a lot of talent there sitting out there waiting potentially for who it is you're going to get and i guess you know there's still other players that have time to enter the transfer portal it's just been i mean it's been less than a week since uh since first of all uconn won the national title and since Cal gave word, it's been less than a week since he gave word to Kentucky. Uh, speaking of the national champions, your your boy Donovan Klingon is going into the draft, Matt. Hey, I'm I'm taking him over Zach Eady. I might be in the minority. I I don't know if, if how much basketball you guys have watched, but but when I watch uh donovan play i watch zach Eady play i mean i like donovan he he's more fluid better defender now you know zach Eady's uh his his size helps but the, his athletic ability how he goes about it um and zach Eady's pretty good too it's 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 1a 1b but i i like i like clinging well just uh he just announced that yesterday uh that he's going into uh he's going to enter into the nba draft uh, yeah, the Boston Marathon and uh, Red Sox baseball on tax day, Patriots Day, of course. It's also the same day that the Boston Marathon bombing occurred. I uh, forget the year that that happened, but that's still, of course, fresh in our memory. What was that, 2016 or uh, 17 that that happened? The winning time, two hours, six minutes, and 17 seconds for the Boston Marathon. 10th fastest time in history. Man, you got to be booking. You got to be booking. If you are if you are running a marathon, 26.2 in just over two hours and six minutes, that's mind-blowing. Farthest I've ever run is seven miles. It might have taken me an hour and 10 minutes to get there, and I even felt like I was moving at that point. 
Now, I don't know if you're a distance runner, man. I know you do a couple of miles every once in a while. What's the longest you've run? You know, in in uh, in track, and we ran the uh, man. It was the 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 two mile relay. Everybody had to run an eight hundred. That that was getting it. Um, you know, running a mile. That's that's you know you, you might practice a little more than that. What amazes me, Phil, is some of those those runners that don't run without any shoes. That's that to me <laughs> is just it's just wild. What about the shoes that look like feet? You've seen those where they it, it outlines each toe. I mean, it's mm-hmm. a it's a shoe that just basically your foot fits into like a glove. Would you wear one of those? Would you wear that out for a night out on the town? Well, um, as long as it, it you can wear it to the golf course, as, as long as I can go golfing with them, then I'd be uh, I, I might give it a chance. Yeah, but I've been told before that the that the that the human foot is naturally made to run. Um, without a shoe on and then I just keep thinking to myself it hurts to walk around the house barefoot and I've got I mean I've got tile floors all around here so maybe that's a little something to do with it but I can't imagine running like kick like, the, remember when the uh, the NFL kickers that used to kick no no shoe no sock I mean isn't that gonna hurt a little bit speaking of kickers too do you see Bates kicked another I think it was 63 yarder in the UFL the former Arkansas kicker who uh, hadn't kicked a field goal since high school. I don't know what the rest of his numbers are, or the, or the rest of his kicking stats are, but if he kicked, I think it was a 65-yarder and then another one over 60 yards. <laughs> it's, not like you, it's not like you were short of a good field goal kicker at Arkansas the last couple of years. And it sounds you might be right now. Hey, that's one thing to maybe worry about. If the offensive line may have been figured out to a point where you feel a lot better about it, well, you felt really good about your kicker last year. I'm not sure if – I don't know if anybody feels the same way about it right now. Sounds like three points may be a little difficult to come by. And what did, I think Mike Irwin told us, hey, you may have a few more fourth down conversion attempts when you're inside the 50 potentially. You always like having a good field goal kicker, and it sounds like we may uh, – we may. I would say we might miss Cam Little, but I don't know. There's something about Little that I think stands out. I mean, even amongst Arkansas history, it's a place that has had a lot of really good field goal kickers. I'm telling you, Cam Little is going to get drafted. Um, I know y'all. It's he's he. It's it's going to. He's that. He's that talent. I don't. I still don't understand why we didn't use him right. But uh, yeah, I mean, you, you're going to be in four down territory. We'll see. I mean, a lot of that stuff's mental. It, it really does. It's a bummer that you lose. You lose Augusta. I mean, he's an absolute stud. Trying to you got to try to make him happy. I I think that's a that's a big L for the Razorbacks, but apparently we're we're deep. We're deep at the running back position. Well, it sounded like uh, Jaquindon Jackson is the guy that's going to get most of the carries. I didn't realize until I was listening to, um, I guess it was uh, the part of the pregame of the bro- of the radio broadcast. Chuck and, and Quinn were on there together along with with uh, with Gino, and they said I knew that Jackson had started his career at Texas. He was a quarterback there, and had transferred to Utah as a quarterback and then converted to running back but his 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 running style <clears throat> seems to be that of a running back who initiates contact or isn't like isn't shying away from contact um you know i guess i just i just you know, we just had a quarterback that was just like that you know kj didn't shy away from contact he would kind of create it at times and and now you got a running back who who was a quarterback who does exactly that too so I'm I'm looking forward to seeing Jackson uh, get the ball, but I thought Augusta would be, uh, I don't know, just like one A or one B, but he did show a lot last year. Somebody's going to pick him up. He's going to get a lot of yardage for someone. Yeah, it might even be in the SEC. I, I think the dude's a a, a talent. I, you know, he keeps on his trajectory. He could be a guy that could play on Sundays. I mean, that's the keep going, stay healthy. All right, we're going to take a break. We've got Connor O'Gara from Saturday Down South coming up in just a moment on Halftime. This is Halftime. I think you can be awfully proud of the way your fans are with you. I've never seen stands so full of life. The whole state was behind you. If there was a spirit there about it, Coach, and that, that means that your team has done something that's really great for this state. Thank you, sir. We're very proud of our fans. They've had a big part in success. Of this video is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned. Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com. 
Thanks for watching us here on ESPN Arkansas. Download the brand new Hit That Line Now app in the Apple and Google Play stores. ESPN Arkansas, more than just radio stations. Call or text the McClarty Daniel Hotline at 877-377-6963. McClarty Daniel, a vehicle for every lifestyle. When you're looking for a new car, you want to shop for a vehicle you love with an organization you trust. You've probably heard that McCarty Daniel means making deals, but what I'm inspired by the most is that McCarty Daniel means making a difference in our community. When you buy a vehicle with McCarty Daniel, you reinvest right here in the community, in our schools, in our little leagues, in our food banks, and our people. So you're not just making a purchase, you're making a difference too. Come see us at any of our six locations in Northwest Arkansas. Tommy Craft here. When it came time for new gates and some fence repairs at my home, the fence man was my first call. The fence man does it all, from large commercial jobs to small residential repairs. Wood privacy fence, vinyl fence, commercial or residential chain link, even custom wrought iron fencing. 479-782-3936. 18 months, same as cash financing with approved credit is now available. If it involves fencing, the fence man does it. The fence man. He ain't afraid of no work. 479-782-3936. A dandy white perch. Big old slab. C'est bon, Sakali. One beautiful crappie. It's a paper mouse. <laughs> Some serious crappie. Nice spec. We got crappie. They might go by different names, but all prefer the same thing. Bobby Garland, America's favorite. White perch, slab, Sakale, paper mouth, crappie, spec, crappie baits. I call it dinner. Bet Online is the number one source for all your sports betting this season and every season. You'll find the latest odds, team matchup info, player news, and game trends all at Bet Online. Bet Online features live betting, free contests, and live scores for almost any sport or game imaginable. The fastest and easiest way to bet all your favorite leagues and events. Go to betonline.ag to join and receive your 50% welcome bonus with your first deposit. Make sure you use the promo code BELIEVE to receive your rewards. Bet online where the game starts. Are you looking for the best Razorbacks insight and analysis? Hell yes. How about listening to an Arkansas football legend? Matt Jones. All he does is make big plays. What's the voice of the Hogs have to say? Hey, what a great crowd last night. Don't forget about the Omahogs. The Hogs are going to Omaha. Matt Jones, Chuck Barrett, and Phil Elson, the best in the business, on the Hit That Line podcast network. Go to hitthatline.com or search Hit That Line wherever you listen to podcasts. Don't forget to rate, review, subscribe, and share. Madonna has gone from like a virgin to like a surgeon. You can try to nip and tuck from the curse of sin, but eventually death is going to win. God will do major surgery on this sin-filled world, and when he does, people will try and hide their faces from him. Even plastic Christians won't be exempt. Look up Isaiah chapter 2 and see how the spiritual world renders this an immaterial world. I'm Pastor Abe from Woodland. Read about it. This So my heart trips the closer I get to you. She's a ghost, and the truth it's impossible. But I love her lies. You make sure I'm gonna find somebody new. It's the way you move. It's the way you move. Find halftime on 99.5 in Northwest Arkansas, 95.3 in Fort Smith and the River Valley, 96.3 in Hot Springs and Central Arkansas, 104.3 in Harrison and Mountain Home, and everywhere on hitthatline.com. Join the conversation. Call or text ESPN Arkansas on the McClarty Daniel Hotline, 877-377-6963. Now back to the hosts. Here's Phil Elson and Matt Jones. Right now on the McClarty Daniel Hotline is Connor O'Gara, a senior columnist from Saturday Down South. 
get to talk to him every couple of weeks here on a Monday. Connor, how you doing today? Doing well. I feel like I watched so, so much football this weekend that my brain is just full of spring game thoughts. I'm trying not to overreact to, but at the same time, it's tough when this is all we get this time of year. Okay, so there are spring games, and then there are just other things that are sort of like a thing that they're doing in spring that is something like football. Can you explain to me what was going down at Ole Miss on Saturday? It was the Pro Bowl. It was the same thing. Same thing as the Pro Bowl. If you can kind of peel it back and understand like what Lane Kiffin's objectives still are at Ole Miss, you could very easily figure out what exactly he was trying to do. Instead of having an intra-squad scrimmage wherein fans probably weren't going to really show up and it wasn't going to be that entertaining, and they were going to, you know, not necessarily even be, you know, streamed on, you know, like ESPN or anything like that. He decided, okay, let's let's try and get a win. And Lane is always just about trying to get that win. He never takes an L. That's not what he does. Let's get let's get as many eyeballs as possible on our program for having a unique experience. We have plenty of other time for scrimmages and things like that. We've got an experienced team. I don't need to see these guys out there in a spring scrimmage. And he said, let's let's have these competitions. Let's have these guys still compete. Let's have Joey Chestnut come in here and eat a disgusting amount of hot dogs. Let's have tug of war contests with sororities. Let's have slam dunk contests. Let's have all of it. And let's just make this like the Pro Bowl. And that's what Lane did. If you liked it, you liked it. If you didn't, you didn't. I think they're okay to get out of there without an injury. But Lane was all about not taking an L. And I would look at that as probably not taking an L. All right. Well, then who took, who, who had, um, who had a spring game that felt much more like an actual game? Georgia. That guys, the, the the Georgia spring game was was really intense. Like Kirby said, we want ones on ones, and we're going to treat this like a real game because we have reps to be able to do this. And we feel like both of these units, like this, will be the best unit that they see all year. Carson Beck is out there with a minute left in this game, having already thrown like forty five passes trying to put together a last-minute drive, and Dom, Dom Lovett ends up making this unbelievable catch, pinning the ball to the back of a DB to be able to get a, a game-tying score. That felt like a, an actual game. I think Alabama's, I think, too, felt like an actual game. 72,000 people there, new coaching staff, different kind of buzz for obviously this post-Nick Saban world that we're living in. But, yeah, those two programs, like it, it really felt like a, an actual game out there because of the town on the field and the fact that they actually had the crowd to be able to support it. Hey, did you get a look at Missouri's spring game? H- have they had theirs yet? Is it, you think that's, that's a team that, that can win 10 games next year? Missouri had their spring game, I think, a month ago, which is weird. Like, really, really weird. I, my, my wife actually asked the exact same question. She's like, the Mizzou playing today or something like that. I don't know why that came up, but I was like, yeah, they're, they're like a month ago, and it was very much under the radar. Uh, but, yeah, I, I think that the big question for Mizzou is, like, what's going to happen on the defensive side of the ball after LSU poaches their top two defensive coaches and Blake Baker's gone, and they've got a lot of guys that you're going to hear their name called in the NFL draft. Like, half of their defense is going to get drafted this year. And I, I think the, the question is going to be, all right, what are we going to see on that side of the ball? But there's a lot of optimism that this should be not only one of the best offenses in the SEC, but one of the best offenses in all of college football with Kirby Moore coming back as the primary play caller. For my money, the more talented of the, the Moores who call plays, more talented than his brother Kellen Moore. But I, I think that seeing Luther Burden in this offense last year made you excited for what he could do in his pre-draft season and all the pieces that they have around them. They loaded up at running back in the portal. Just a, a really, really fun group coming off of a New Year's Six Bowl victory and a group that I think a lot of people might be sleeping on, or at least if they are now, they probably won't be by the time the season actually starts. So if you watched all, you watched all of them on Saturday, you must have seen the Hogs. They were on SEC Network. Um, what stood out in the two hours that they played? Besides Luke has taking off a defensive back's head, um, look, <laughs> that play was insane. Like, I – I didn't. I didn't see that live. I had to see that on, on the replay. But like, oh my gosh, we got we got pads popping. This is not you know just two hand touch out here that that we're playing. Um, given the injury history, I'm sure they'd like to avoid those situations with with Luke uh, in the in the preseason here. But I think that Arkansas fans have an understandable level of excitement for Taylor Green in the Bobby Petrino offense. I, I think at this point, 
you know what didn't work last year. You know, whether you want to pin that entirely on Danny Nose, whether you want to say some of that was KJ, you could say it's on the offensive line. There are a lot of things that contributed to the product that we saw on the field last year for that Arkansas offense. It doesn't mean it's instantly going to be like night and day with this group, but you've seen enough from the Boise State transfer to, to make you think that he's going to be able to rectify a lot of those mistakes. The RPO game, which you can't even really see in a spring game, like he had two runs that were called back that probably are going for six if they're able to be called like a real game. And you see the, the connection that he has with these receivers already. And you hear the way that he's talked about the leadership traits, all those different things. There is a fair amount of optimism, I think, that if you can at least be better in that area and more consistent, you're going to have a chance. And I say that as, as somebody that's an admitted KJ defender, as big of a KJ supporter as there is, but it's hard not to be optimistic about those guys so far. When I think of uh, of Ole Miss's spring game, one of the knocks on Lane Kiffin is not being really t- a tough enough team. If you're going to beat Ole Miss, you you, you kind of got to kick them in the teeth and, and they'll fold. Do you think that could be something to worry about if you're Ole Miss this year? Because we know they're going to have the talent. Yeah, look, it's a fair question. I, I don't think last year they had the talent. Like, I, I think that – some of the, the toughness questions that have been asked in the past, I, I think have been justified. I, I would tend to though, look at the way that they run the football and say that, that that's a team that like, if, if they weren't tough, there's no way they'd be able to have such a high floor running the football. So I'll give them the benefit of the doubt there. But uh, you know, I, I think that you, you look at the talent that they brought in on the defensive side, especially in the portal. And you think to yourself, all right, if they can't figure things out now and get those pieces to work and be able to take that next step once again and compete with the Georges of the world, when will it happen? And, and that's, that's a very high bar to set, but it's a program that finished in the top 10 and had you know an 11-win season for the first time in program history. We're asking these questions because they've given us reason to ask them, but it's going to be about whether or not they can get all these pieces to fit on the defensive side of the ball and if Pete Golden can lead – and one of the better defenses in the SEC because you know their offense is going to be special with the weapons they return, the weapons they bring in, like a Juice Wells, like like a Logan Diggs from LSU. There's a lot to like there. But, yeah, the, the toughness question is probably going to come up. And if they lose to Georgia or a team like that, it'll be asked again. So I know I know Kentucky was supposed to play a spring game this weekend, but did they really play or did they just have a – did they just have a celebration in Rupp Arena that is getting all the conversation? <laughs> yeah, look, that, the, the reception for Mark Pope, I mean, my goodness, was second to none. I know there was some Arkansas interest on that side, obviously. But, yeah, the uh, the spring game, we can't really call it that. If, one, it's not really a true game, and, two, it's not available to be streamed, which it wasn't. I actually watched highlights from my guys over at KSR who, you know, had video boots on the ground type stuff there and was able to, to see, you know, some of the comments post game and some of the reaction to it. So that was my perspective of it. You couldn't just sit down and turn on SEC network and watch this. But, you know, I, I think there are a lot of people wondering with Kentucky, like what does this offense look like after my doppelganger, Liam Cohen went back to the NFL. They want to see what Bush Hamden, the new OC looks like with Brock Vandergrift coming over from Georgia after three years of sitting on the bench behind great quarterbacks there. And they want to see, all right, can this defense actually bounce back after really an atypically bad year it was last year. So yeah, it wasn't really much of a spring game showing. It's hard to gauge too much for, from Kentucky, but under the radar is kind of the way that Mark Stoops likes it. Hey, did you get a chance to to see Rocket Sanders at South Carolina and 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 who's going to be their quarterback this year? How, how do you like South Carolina? Yeah, there so they'll be in action uh this upcoming weekend. Okay. So we'll get a yeah, hopefully more from a, a better look at Rocket. I, I hope we can get Rocket healthy. Um because man, last year was just it, it was a bummer. It, it really was. And you know, it's unfortunate that it played out the way that it did at Arkansas. I feel like he's not really being talked about that much at South Carolina because, you know, he went from one team with a shaky offensive line to another team with what we consider to be a shaky offensive line. South Carolina hasn't run the football particularly well during the Shane Beamer era. They need to be able to do that better. They haven't had an explosive playmaker quite like Rocket Sanders when healthy, but it's going to be interesting to see kind of how they pair him being able to, to have a quarterback in Lenora Sellers, so everybody kind of assumes it's going to be the guy. They added Robbie Ashford from Auburn, but 
I think that Sellers is going to end up winning that starting job. And if they can form that one-two punch, there will be a lot of people going, man, this, this feels a lot like what Rocket and KJ, what we thought they could be. They need to be able to get better in the trenches. You talk about the toughness question with Ole Miss. The toughness question is fair to ask with South Carolina with how much they've struggled both running the football and defending the run during the Shane Beamer era. I know Alabama had a, had a spring game this weekend, and I know that without even reading your – your piece, because I was in Tuscaloosa this weekend. I saw Jalen Milrow, Milrow throw out the first pitch. Um, I thought it would have made sense if they'd have uh, Gurmy Bernard catching it for him, but they didn't. They had an Alabama catcher catch it instead. And then on Saturday, um, the baseball game started two hours after uh, A-Day started, and you could see, like, once you got into the third inning, the ballpark swelled up. People came over from the football game and were not there at the start of the baseball game. I don't know what happened. What happened at Alabama? Lovely Saturday. That's that's a nice little Saturday in Tuscaloosa. It was. You know, get, you know, we, you know we'll get a whole lot of these these spring days like that. But but to be able to do that, I, I'm sure the the great people of Alabama appreciated that very much. Yeah, I, I think that everybody's wondering what this new offense is going to look like with Kalen DeBoer, Michael Penix Jr., and Jalen Milrow are very very different players who so far in their careers have been asked to do very different things. And what's it going to look like with what we think will be a more pass-heavy approach on the offensive side of the ball? Jeremy Bernard, who follows Kalen DeBoer from Washington, he looks like the best player on the field in that spring game. He looks like he's going to be a go-to target for Jalen Milrow. They really haven't had a true go-to wide receiver one the last two years at Alabama. Can Bernard kind of be that guy with his familiarity with the system? One would think he projects really well. But, yeah, seeing him, seeing Ty Simpson, a guy that a lot of people could be watching as a potential portal guy if he's still locked into that QB2 role he could have a significant market if he does decide to hit the portal and not wait around you know post Jalen Milrow era all the all that stuff he looked a lot better so yeah I think Alabama fans are feeling optimistic about the the start of the the Kalen DeBoer era the, the beginning of the post Saban era as weird as that is to be able to say well now we're re- now we've got to be ready for mass chaos because you got the basketball portal open uh, football portal opens tomorrow, doesn't it? It's two weeks in the spring, right? Yeah, it opens It opens tomorrow. I don't know why they don't do this on a Monday. You know, like, who starts something on a Tuesday? Like, what, what, can we get that figured out? I mean, I, I had to, like, explain to people, like, no, actually, you know, look at the NCAA website, April 16th on a Tuesday, they decided to open this thing. Uh, yeah, it, it's going to be chaos, I think. I don't think it's going to be chaos at quarterback. It's just it hasn't been in the past. If you kind of look at the post-spring quarterback market, you like to be able to have those spring reps in there. And so I don't really think it yields to that. Who knows? Maybe we get a couple of big splashes there. But I think there's going to be a lot of movement just because you can't regulate it. The post-Tennessee NCAA ruling, all of these post-January job changes that we had that, that opened up a 30-day window at places like Alabama, Washington, Arizona, Michigan. There was a lot of movement there where it was a one-way street, so those guys are going to be active in the portal. I think we're going to see a ton of movement over the course of the next few days, and, and I think we're going to have our craziest post-spring portal yet. Hmm. So what your colleague Matt Hayes is calling it college football's doomsday. That might, is that going a little too far, or do you think he's, he's about accurate there? I never, I never question the work of, of the great Matt Hayes. I never question it. Uh, he's usually got a pretty good inkling on, on these things. So I'll, I'll kind of wait and see how that plays out. I don't know that, that we're going to be saying it's doomsday, it's the end of the world, it's the end of college football as we know it, but I do think we need to brace ourselves for some crazy scenarios. A lot of established players potentially entering the portal, not quite maybe on the level of like a Jordan Addison leaving Pitt for USC a couple of years ago, but I do think that we could be in for some headliner names that are making some moves, and maybe it'll make some college football fans feel like it's doomsday. Thorough and newsworthy. Always great stuff, Connor. Appreciate you. We'll uh, talk again in two weeks, okay? Gentlemen, appreciate it. Thanks, Connor. Connor O'Gara, national columnist, Saturday Down South, joining us here on Halftime. Um, Hey, by the way, you can actually get in your uh, preseason picks already for the SEC football champion, for the college football playoff champion, for the ACC, the Big 12, and the Big 10. And you notice they don't have any odds on Bet Sarazen for a Pac-2 championship. we got Georgia plus 325 for the Natty. Ohio State plus 450. Texas is plus 800. It's all there on your Bet Sarazen app for Apple users downloaded on the App Store 
Works on Android. Just download from the Google Play and any web browser, BetSarazin.com. Remember, you got to be inside the state of Arkansas to use BetSarazin. But you can be anywhere and get on the McClarty Daniel hotline and call or text us, 877-377-6963. We'll be right back in a moment. This is Halftime. You can now download our new app in the iTunes or Google Play Store. Listen anytime and anywhere on your favorite mobile device. Just search Hit That Line now. The best selection of RVs is now even better at Wheels RV in Springdale. Wheels RV has added Brinkley RVs to the already loaded lineup of Grand Design and Forest River products. See the Brinkley Model Z, the latest innovation in luxury fifth wheels. And like always, every new RV comes with a lifetime warranty so you can camp with confidence. So stop in and find out why Wheels has been voted best RV dealer year after year. Wheels RV, five miles west of exit 72 off of I-49 in Springdale. Seek, explore, discover with Wheels RV. Are you over 30 and putting off life insurance? It's time to get a quick quote from Ethos, a better, easier way to get term life insurance, all online with no medical exam. Answer a few health questions and you could be approved for up to $2 million. Isn't it worth 10 minutes to help protect your family's financial security? Ethos, up to $2 million in coverage with no medical exam. Some policies as low as a dollar a day. Answer a few health questions and get your free quote at checkethos.com. That's checkethos.com. You're listening to Halftime Live from the Crabtree RV Center Studios. Crabtree RV Center, where RVing is life. With everyday low prices on top brands, locally owned Jaeger's Ace Hardware is committed to offering real service with real savings. Get these red-hot buys at any of our four locations. Save $90 on the DeWalt 20-volt Max Trimmer and Blower Kit. Only $199 with your Ace Rewards card. Triazicide 10-pound granules, ready to spray or concentrate, is $7.99 with Ace Rewards. And buy batteries and chargers and get the tool free on select DeWalt, Milwaukee, and Craftsman Power Tools. Find us online at JaegersHardware.com. The Wave Rural Connect Shoal Creek Zone is open. Fast fiber internet, TV, and home phone available. This covers Midway, New Blaine, Scranton, Delaware, and other areas. Even if this isn't your zone, check your address. We might be available for you. Get your whole home solution. Internet, TV, and phone from a local provider. Go to signup.waveruralconnect.com or call 1-833-492-8372. Arkansas Valley Electric and Wave Rural Connect. Changing the communities we serve. Are you tired of the overcrowded fitness centers? Would you like a fitness option where you can actually work out? Then let's hang out. The Hangout is Fort Smith's newest fitness facility. It has an 8,000 square foot gym, indoor tennis, pickleball, and basketball with more sports coming soon. The Hangout offers group and individual training in the gym and boasts three active tennis pros to help you grow your game. Stop in today at 5400 Gary Street or thehangoutfs.com for more information. Be a part of something different. Fitness, sports, and more. Let's hang out. And we're back with the action. Coke Zero Sugar might be the best Coke ever. That's right, Jim. With an irresistible taste and zero sugar, Coke Zero Sugar is a must try for any sports fan. So make sure you... Wait, Jim, I didn't mean try it right now. We're still on the air. Mmm, best Coke ever? Take a taste, Jen. Really? No, not right now, Jen. We got a game to call. When you need legal help, turn to the law offices of Craig L. Cook. With over 40 years combined experience, the Cook Law Team works for you. If you've been injured in an auto accident, hurt on the job, a victim of nursing home negligence, or need help with bankruptcy, social security, wills, trusts, estates, or family law issues, Craig Cook will go to work for you. Call us today, 479-783-8000. The law offices of Craig L. Cook with locations in Arkansas and Oklahoma. We work for working people. Get 2.9% financing for 72 months on a GMC Sierra Crew Cab at Harry Robinson Buick GMC. Choose from 2.7 or 5.3 liter Sierra Crew Cabs this month and get 2.9% for 72. Or get up to $6,500 in factory rebates on select 2024 GMC Sierra trucks. Conquer with confidence in a new GMC from Harry Robinson Buick GMC. We are professional grade. Harry Robinson Buick GMC. Exit 11 off of I-540 in Fort Smith. Your home for every Razorback football, basketball, and baseball game. ESPN 95.3. <laughs> Sit, 
Since you've moved away and had some days Wonders about tonight I plan to run away I don't just finish this path of cigarette And I don't smoke You're listening to Halftime with Phil Olson and Matt Jones. Want to jump in the conversation? Call or text ESPN Arkansas on the McClarty Daniel Hotline, 877-377-6963. Now, here's Phil Olson and Matt Jones. I see some rumors from uh, journalists out here saying that they're expecting Jacoby Criswell to uh, potentially hit the portal soon. Uh, and to expect an announcement, to said his locker's been cleaned out. So uh, that that might tell you who won the number two job as far as quarterbacks concerned, right, Matt? No, 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 no. That just says who's not number one. Now, he's not here to be a number two. I, I thought he I, he looked he at times looked better than KJ last year, and then he not even really given an opportunity. You know, say, a, it didn't even a new. Think, o- I don't think he had a chance to to compete for the. That's job. that's what I mean. That's 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 it. So I. Sometimes a new a new staff comes in, whatever for whatever reason. I wish the kid luck. I think he's okay, actually. I think he's a he's a talented kid that needs reps. That's and and a lot of those kids, every quarterback, all those quarter, you need reps. You got to be getting first team reps. Be the guy for three years, and and they like they like that about Taylor Green had done that at Boise State. So that's you got to get in somewhere. Uh, where you can you can be taking the reps. That's that's the only way. That's the main way. There's a lot of ways to get better as a quarterback, but that's the that's something you have to do as a quarter. You got to be taking reps. Well, if you go in the portal right now, you go in the portal like Augusta did yesterday or or Criswell today. That means your mind's been made up for a long time. This is something you've probably decided on for a long time. But then you've also gone through spring practice, the spring game. You know, so called competed for. Uh, in Criswell's uh, in Criswell's situation, the number two job for quarterback, but the portal wasn't open until now. So otherwise, they'd have, they'd have gone earlier. Um, but yeah, I mean, I kind of wondered about that when when it just became obvious that uh, Taylor Green was the number one quarterback, and I guess there should be some kind of a of a uh, graphic sometime soon. And they, I think Coach Pittman said, you know, they'd be announcing. QB1 after spring ball, it's pretty obvious who it is, and it's been obvious for a long time. But, you know, Criswell, I don't think he would have ever had a chance uh, to compete for the number one job uh, because Taylor Green was handpicked by Bobby Petrino. I mean, he recruited him to Missouri State, um, knew he wasn't going to get him because he thought he'd be a divi- you know a, a, an FBS guy instead of FCS. So when he had a chance to go find a quarterback, that's the guy he went and found. Um, so, and I, I remember thinking, man, you're going to actually have a real competition for quarterback. And I like that idea. And I'm, I'm not saying this in any sort of criticism for the coaching staff or for Taylor Green. Um, they know what they're doing with this. Uh, but I did think that there would be a, um, a, a real competition for number one quarterback. I don't think that there was. That's, yeah, when you go out and get your guy, that's um... – that's a good thing. That means that uh, they, they like what they've seen. Yeah, well, they obviously do like what they've seen. So I guess that means Malachi Singleton's the number two. I mean, they, that now he's got to be the backup, the second stringer. Um, I kept hearing, you know, good things about K.J. Jackson, and maybe he is the future of the position. Um, but it would it would seem to me that now that it's that you get Taylor Green, number one, Malachi Singleton, number two, and then K.J. Jackson is the third-string quarterback. And so you've lost a quarterback who was a backup. You've lost a running back who was a backup. But Augusta was going to get some carries. I don't know how much play Criswell would have gotten. Probably none unless there's an injury. But Augusta would have gotten some run. So 
Do you need an, do you, you don't you need you don't need another quarterback to you know it's not like you got to replace Criswell in this case do you if you like Singleton and you like Jackson it looks like it's in place for next season at least one two and three you know you want to know your roles that's that's one thing the spring ball does is it, it kind of helps define what the roles are uh, for the off season uh, going into fall, to you know to fall camp you, you know who's the ones you know where the, where, where the twos. Uh, you know where you stand. You know what you need to work on. Uh, and, and hopefully everybody got out, out, out of spring ball halfway healthy. I'm a big believer in hitting in, in, in spring ball. You get all summer. You get all, all time to, to, to sounds, rest up. It sounds like they did a lot of tackling in spring practice. Maybe not necessarily like certain positions in the spring game. But I think, I mean, it really sounds from what uh, Sam Pittman has said is that they've put a premium on – a physical spring and I don't, I don't think it you know, doesn't sound like anybody is too beaten up from spring. And then on the opposite, I mean, Ole Miss is doing it a whole different way. That's <laughs> I know, I know uh, I had the idea of um, making sure nobody gets hurt in, in a spring game or whatever it is, but a hot dog eating contest with Joey chestnut, I don't know. That's a that's a little bit different. I guess that kind of fits into the party at the sip idea. They really had they had a hot dog eating contest. I mean, at they the had the game. world yeah. record holder for eating hot dogs. They okay. turned it into it. They turned it. They, it sounds to me like what they did is they kind of brought a little bit of the grove inside the stadium. The more I I, I see this Ole Miss thing going on, the the least I like them. The, the, I'm not a not. I don't. I don't know if I'm buying into the Ole Miss hype like everybody else is. Well, what is what is it about it? Is it? it, it do you, I know they got you, our best player. I know. I know who their stud is. I know their middle linebacker over there is an absolute beast that's going to play on Sundays. I know that. I mean, I know he's tough, but I. I they're they're just kind of underwear and shorts type of thing. They're they're not really getting it, man. You got to get it. You saw what jo you saw Georgia win the last couple. You saw what Michigan was like. You see these teams that 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 hit you. If if you don't hit, you're not going to make it in the playoff twelve. There, there's just no way. Well, it sounded like Arkansas has been doing some hitting. Playoff twelve, I don't know, but I'm just hoping it'll be a. I'm hoping it'll be quite a bit better than than what we saw this past season. And uh, now we know that there's one uh, running back and one quarterback that are uh, not part the, of the team the new anymore. rules. If the if the new kickoff would come to college like it's going to the NFL, that would benefit Augusta. That's a guy that I look at when you're saying, where's the spot on the team where he can really, you know, be a guy, be a star, be a dude. Uh, if there was a way to get him the ball, that kick return, if the the, the new once college goes to that, I could see him uh, being really good at that. Can't imagine that that can't be more than a year or two away from actually, you know, they'll, I guess you just study what happened in the NFL first and then, and then go from there. But that'd be a lot better than what we see with kickoffs now, which in college, it's like the NFL was. Why are we even doing this? You need that play in the game. It's such an exciting play. It, it can help. It gives the teams that are less talented a more of a, ch a more of a chance too, because it, it is a roll of the dice type of play. And, and if you have a skill guy, uh, you know, like a Felix Jones, you, you you have a skill guy that can take something and all you got to do is find that crease, find that seam, uh, and it can be an explosive play. That would be perfect for Augusta. I'm trying to go in my head here and think of like, like it. So when I think about this, no surprise Criswell's in the portal. Um, I am surprised Augusta is in the portal, but if I try to get into the kid's head, he wants to be a guy who's, who, who will get the ball more than he would have gotten here. I just question if you're leaving in the spring after you've learned this offense and some of the intric intricacies about it, you're, you're not in spring ball for, the, uh, for whatever team you go transfer to now. Like, <laughs> you start behind everybody else. So, I mean, it, I guess it depends on where it is he transfers to, but it's not like he's leaving Arkansas – and is just going to go be a featured guy somebody somewhere else. You got a lot to learn between uh, between whenever he makes his choice and when August camp starts. I mean, that's why I would yeah, hey, you'd rather be somebody that transfers out after the regular season. But then again, I mean, they didn't know what everything would look like, and I guess in their minds they were going to compete for starting roles. And it turns out that wasn't the case.
Yeah, and some guy, man, it's tough. It, it, it's it's tough when you're used to playing, um, and, and you're talented enough to contribute and to play, and you, and you're sitting there watching. You know, it had to be tough on him last year, uh, sitting there watching just take L after L after L, uh, knowing that you can help the team. And so I, I wish him nothing but the best, man. I think he, I really do. I think Isaiah is a, a he's a stud. I, I think he'll be okay. I'd be really interested to see where Criswell goes and. And it's the same idea. Like, where, where, where is it? Where is he going to go? Where now he can play? You're still going to have to be a backup and learn the offense, right? Like, yeah, yeah. But it's all. I mean, look, Taylor Green's got extra years after this, so I mean, he's your quarterback for at least the next two years. So there wouldn't have been a spot for for Criswell in that in that in that in that case. I guess you know. In in my mind, I kind of wondered about Singleton because I know that Singleton's really talented and and uh, and you know, wants to get out on the field and everything. But, you know, when I, when I saw his father sitting next to you at the All-American Steakhouse and Sports Theater on Saturday, on Friday, Matt, I'm like, well, he's probably not coming here. He's not coming here to watch the spring game if his son's about to go in the portal. That's just not going to happen. No, Carlo looked like an athlete as, uh, himself. He, he looked like he could have balled back in the day. Mm-hmm, definitely could. All right, we're going to wrap things up on halftime in just a moment, so stay with us. Are you an angler having trouble finding all the bait, tackle, and more for your fishing needs? Make a wait, bait and tackle. Now located in Fort Smith next to Whispering. On North 11th Street is your place. Make a wait, bait and tackle. Also has the largest selection of plastics in the River Valley. Reactor Innovation, Bobby Garland, Sue, Mega Bass, and more. Check out the Dial Rod and Reels. Make a wait, bait and tackle. 803 North 11th Street in Fort Smith. 479-926-9320. Also get your rod and reels repaired. Come see us next to Whispering at Make a Wake Bait and Tackle. The American Patriot Promotions Gun Show is coming to the Sebastian County Fairgrounds in Greenwood Saturday, May the 4th and Sunday, May the 5th. Tickets are just $10 per person, $8 for veterans, military, and active police force. Plus, children 16 and under get in free. On Saturday, the event goes from 9 a.m. till 5 p.m. and Sunday from 9 a.m. till 3 p.m. For more information, go to AmericanPatriotPromotions.com. May the 4th be with you ebay motors is here for the ride 120,000 miles of night drives daily commutes and who knows how many are we there yet through countless fixes elbow grease and a new radiator you kept your ride alive with ebay motors you have over 122 million parts to keep it running and with ebay guaranteed fit they'll be the perfect fit every time plus at these prices well we're burning rubber not cash keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com eligible items only exclusions apply why do people love Shamrock Liquor Warehouse? Simple. They've got it all. 70 years in business, 15,000 square feet of choices. They buy in volume so you can save. What else? How about the largest selection of well, everything? Shamrock's got it. Special orders? Shamrock's got it. Convenient drive through open six days a week? Shamrock's got it. Need a keg for your party? Shamrock's got it. Load up at Shamrock Liquor Warehouse at the corner of Midland and Riverfront Drive in Fort Smith. Come get you some. 2728 Townsend Avenue is your off-road and performance center headquarters. They've got everything from lift kits, wheels, LED light bars, UTV parts and accessories, winches and tires. Need general 4x4 repair? No problem. Come get you some has one of the largest 4x4 shops in the state. They do it all, from installing a bug shield to building some of the baddest off-road machines in the country. Call them today at 782-6833. That's 782-MUD. Or check them out online at cgysoffroad.com. Come get you some. Supply issues are no issue at Shamrock Roofing and Construction. As one of America's largest roofing companies, we stock up early and we stock up big. We can do your job right now. And because we paid less for our material, we can share those savings with you. Call today or visit us at shamrockroofer.com. Attention homeowners, storms are firing up quickly and widespread damage means thousands are reaching out for the right roofing company. Don't wait. Get on the schedule with Shamrock Roofing and Construction now for quality and peace of mind. One call does it all. Shamrock Roofing and Construction call 479-319-5100. It's sad that we live in an unsafe world, but we do. Would you be able to show the police who was at your home if something was taken? Guardtronic installs alarm systems as well as camera systems. Here at ESPN Arkansas, we rely on Guardtronic installed cameras to keep an eye on the radio station when we're not here. Guardtronic has been serving the River Valley for over 60 years. Call Guardtronic for a free estimate so you'll be able to show the police who the bad boys are that took your stuff. Guardtronic, license E50. 
When I need a place to stay in Northwest Arkansas, I always choose the Inn at the Mill. It's centrally located in the heart of NWA at the Johnson exit off I-49 and is the most unique choice of hotels in the region. Whether you're in town for the game, a concert at the amp, business travel, or just a weekend away, the Inn at the Mill has a spacious, clean room ready for you. Reserve your stay at the Inn at the Mill, 479-443-1800, or visit innatthemill.com. The Inn at the Mill, where the past meets the present. Your home for Every Razorback football, basketball, and baseball game. ESPN Welcome back into Halftime Live from the Crabtree RV Studios. Crabtree RV Center in Alma, where we make your dreams come true. All right, kind of wrap things up here uh, with uh, Heinz Ward as a wide receivers coach at Arizona State. Is it all right if I turn into a Sun Devils fan for the Big 12 season? That's uh, one of my... It's one of my two favorite Steelers, the other being Troy Polamalu. So I would uh, guess I'm going to be an Arizona State fan this next year. There's another guy that was a quarterback in high school, the, like your Jaquindon Jackson. That's right. Yeah. Did he, did he play a little bit of quarterback at Georgia, mm-hmm. just a tiny mm-hmm. little bit, mm-hmm. along with running back and wide receiver too? Just a, just a natural. I mean, Hines Ward, I don't know if his numbers make him a Hall of Famer. I, I guess it's probably already past him. Uh, it, but as far as a, the ultimate like football player teammates, him and Anquan Bolden would be my two receivers. That like if you if you had to get in a street fight and you you just had to hit each other, and you but then you had to be able to play receiver also. Heinz Ward and Anquan Bolden would be the two I want. Thing is, is like Ward is one of those people that just always looks like he's smiling. Even when he was hurt, like he, he just always, I don't know how you do that. How do people that always look like they're smiling keep that look on their face? Is it that easy to do it? Do you, does it take any effort at all? I call them corners up people. I don't know how you pull that off. I wear, I wear my mood on my face and there's nothing I can do about it. I'm not always happy. And you'll be able to tell if you look at my face. With Heinz Ward, I mean, it's like he must either always be happy or he had a surgery or something, just like uh, just like the Joker, to keep those corners of the mouth up. I never quite understood how you can pull that kind of thing off. Uh, all right, just to recap what we got going on here today. Let's see, Isaiah Augusta entered the portal. That was yesterday. Jacoby Criswell, he hasn't entered the portal yet, but uh, there are numerous reports that say his locker is cleared out, so he's going to head into the portal. Um we got Boogie Fland from Kentucky also entering the portal. You got DJ Wagner, Kentucky point guard, is going into the portal. Matt, it's here. Now it's here. Now it's it's football, basketball portals all rolled into one. And I think we're going to have to start instituting the uh, the warp zone rule starting tomorrow. Twenty five fifty cents fifty cents uh, per mention. Does that sound about right? Yeah, I mean we uh, we could get some. Uh... We could get some good Beatles records for for C Music's uh, lessons with fifty cents a a, a, a fine. That that add up quickly. I didn't even realize that. Too, that somebody had texted it about it earlier. It's tax day. We forgot to have him play Tax Man. Well, we filed an extension, so we we can do it. We can do it later on in the week. We'll play that in October, because he'll get. We're gonna get it. We'll get a full extension to October. That's good. Very good. I like how you think, Matt. I like how you think. You help me. You help me with my. Um, you help me with my uh, my my just pushing things off a little bit. It makes me feel good about it. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Uh, tomorrow in halftime will be a good old fashioned Tuesday, which includes Chuck Barrett. Uh, also, I think we might have Alyssa Orange or not. Alyssa's in New York. You know, she's uh, covering the Olympics. 
and it looks like every couple of months gets could gets to go to New York uh, to uh, meet with everybody else that she's covering with. Lucky. And Bill King from Nashville Sports Radio, too. Yeah, who wouldn't want to be in the Apple in the middle of April? It is a nice time of the year to be there. Good to be back with you guys for a Monday edition of Halftime. If you missed anything, the Eastside Liquor Halftime podcast will be downloadable in just a few minutes. Ruskin and Zach are next up, so stay tuned for that, and we're with you tomorrow for another award-winning edition of Halftime. For Matt Jones and for Christian C. Unit Johnston, I'm Phil. Thanks for listening. That's Halftime. Get up, get out, and get better.